All right. Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, we have a special, special, special guest on the Stop and Chat. Jamie Thomas <laughs> yes. is back. What's up, guys? Good Jamie. to see you guys. Good to hear you. Good Be to here. see you too, bro. How are you, bro? I'm really good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not just saying that either. I'm good. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> let, me, That's awesome. let me tell you something. You look good. Oh, thanks. You, wait, where are you, bro? Listen, this isn't your normal office, man. You're, you're, you're somewhere else. Where are you? Uh, I'm in Salt Lake City. What are you doing um, up there? My daughter has a friend, uh, uh, like a school friend, that they have a second house in Utah. And their family came here um, just because virtual learning, you can be anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, she's a ninth grader. And my daughter and her cooked up this idea that she would come up here and hang with her for a long weekend. Awesome. And we looked into flights and it was like 300 bucks round trip to have a, sa a chaperone, you know, kind of, she's 14. So walking her from check-in to the airplane and we're like, man, that's too expensive to be paying somebody to walk with our daughter. So um, my wife asked me if I had any friends in Salt Lake, and I do. I have a friend, Jeremy Jones, that uh, was a pro snowboarder, uh -huh. and um, he's a great friend. And so I hit him up and was like, hey, man, can I come and see you? And so he said, yeah. So I basically flew here with my daughter, and then her friend's family picked her up at the airport, and my friend Jeremy picked me up at the airport. We ju I just got here today, and I'm at his office. Awesome, dude. Wow. Yeah. Let me so ask it's kind you. Kind of like a dude's getaway retreat. I get to hang out with my friend and. Um, and your yeah, daughter cool. gets to go do her thing. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Double we, the that, pleasure. Double the pleasure. We like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Are you going to, are you going to do some skating out there? Cause they got the, the they got the woodward out there. They do. Um, and my, uh, and Jeremy works on the building, the mountain bike trails, at Woodward park city. So, oh, wow. um, we went there and rode mountain bikes a little bit today. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm not much of a mountain bike guy. I kind of filmed him and just kind of rode down the trails all like grandpa style. I mean, that still that could be fun though, right? It was just, fun. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. yeah. He has he has an electric mountain bike, so you just skirt right up the hill. Nice. No way. Wait, so you skirt yeah. up the hill and then go down, you go back down with just Yeah, you go down but you don't really pedal, so you don't kick in the electric on the way down, you know, you're just you're just like cruising down. Man, That's I've always wanted cool. to get an electric bicycle man but a lot of them are really bulky and big tires and heavy like i just want a normal bike with a little battery on it to just zip me you know to and from you know they got that nowadays you got you got yeah. lots of stuff to choose from they got a beach cruiser basically that's what i want yeah, yeah they got it they're waiting for you <laughs> i'm telling you bro. they're a couple grand they're a couple grand but that's the, um, that's the my kids are like hassling me for them like bad <laughs> that's a thing man jamie like us growing up like we want wanted like the Voltron set. You know what I mean? Like that, that's like a couple hundred bucks. Like your kids want like $3,000 bikes. Like we just wanted some GI Joes. You're right. You're right. And they don't, and to them, it's like, my friends got them. I'm like, what, what's up, dad? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, right. This is You're normal. This is normal, You're right? It. You're like, this is what we used to play with, with Voltron. Yeah. You could put them all together. Yeah. They form Voltron. <laughs> <laughs> right? But I love it, that. Yeah. yeah. Does, it no. your, does your daughter, is she, does she skate at all? Yeah. She, actually, all three of my kids kind of leaned into skating throughout COVID. Um, my kids are 12, 14, and 16. Youngest is boy, boy, girl, boy. Boy, girl, boy. And um, my daughter, actually, all three of them skate. Um, the youngest one is like a little more tranny. Mm -hmm. And then the oldest is 16. And he's like, you know, working on his flat ground and trying to get tech a little bit. And um, Sick, it's cool. Yeah, I get to um, skate with him sometimes. And my daughter was trying to trying to learn some moves. And she ended up uh, like breaking her thumb about two months ago, three months, two and maybe three months ago now. And she's got her cast off and she's chilled a little bit. She hasn't <laughs> asked me about going skating. Okay. In the last <laughs> couple <of> weeks. <laughs> oh, it's funny. We were talking to uh, Chris Cole uh, on the other stop and chat. Well, and we'll get into that too, man. Chris so Cole's right, back right on there. zero. We will yes. talk about that. But it yeah. was funny because we were asking, you know, sometimes kids, they, they don't want advice from, you know, especially 14. They don't want, they want to do stuff themselves, right? Are yeah. you trying to teach them tricks and the secrets to some tricks or are you, are you just kind of letting them go? Like, hey, like I'm give them some pointers. I think it's a little bit of each. I okay. mean, I think that the kids, you know, 
my, my oldest, actually both of them are, they'll ask me about tricks, but I let them ask, you know, like, so we'll be, um, we were, we were a few weeks ago, we were like, we had about a month or four or five weeks in a row. We went to this, we went to this elementary school down the street from my house and they have a two stair that's really smooth and, um, the smooth ground that's shaded. It was like during like the heat wave or whatever. And, um, all three of my kids would be working on something different. And, um, it was kind of like, I was like, an instructor or something like we had our own little family thomas family skate camp going. <laughs> and um and like my oldest would be kick flipping the two stair or like trying to like you know i don't know front side pop shove the two stair or whatever and mm. then the youngest is trying to learn heel flips on flat and then my daughter's trying to learn pop shoves and um anyway it was it was cool but i i would just watch them you know do their thing and then um I, you know sometimes they would ask me like hey do you know how to do this trick and um and they don't ask for the details because I'm not sure that they really even know mm. what they're asking for. Gotcha. Um, and I would be like, yeah, you know, I, it, it would, depending on the trick, like, you know, they ask me sometimes about like things like, can you do a hard flip? And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> you know, I, yes. I can do, I can do a crusty hard flip. I can do it good enough for defense and skate, but not like I don't have good form and it's not one I'd like to show off. Right. So <laughs> I'll like, tr- I'll try one or two just so they know that I'm not like, I'm not like bullshitting them. Right, right, right. And and then, but sometimes it's just like front shoves and I know how to do front shoves good or kick flips or heel flips, you know, and three flips and stuff. And they'll ask for foot positioning or they'll try one and it'll go bananas. And I'll be like, oh, if you put your foot in the corner, or, right. you know, whatever. But you still know the mechanics of the tricks. That's what, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they take, they take, uh, they take direction fairly well, but earlier on in their skateboarding careers, before they discovered it on their own, they didn't want anything to do with me. They didn't want me to hear that's from me. That's what I was going to ask, too, because for me, I have a five-year-old, and I get, like, when I try to present the board to him, he almost seems like he does not want to do anything. I show him, like, how to all. He just, like, does not give a shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it, it's refreshing to hear for you from you now, like, in a sense, like, as the kids are older, like, they're, they're into it, which is cool, you know? But I'm not trying to force my kid to, like, skateboard. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Which as much as I want him to, I'm not trying to force him. So I get what you're saying in the sense of you're like, you're letting them come to you, mm-hmm. you know, when they have questions. So I get that right now. I'm, 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 I'm in that zone. I'm letting him come to me. Right. <laughs> For right. sure. Yeah. I mean, and as parents, like, I feel like, you know, as my kids are a little bit older, it's my responsibility to present them with opportunities, yep. mm-hmm. you know, and it, and those opportunities means just like they have a board in the garage that's good and I keep their board updated even if they're not skating and but like they're getting bigger I'm like updating their board I'm making sure that they got a board that works for them Mm -hmm. and then when one of their friends says hey you want to go skate at the town center or whatever they grab their board and then they go and have a great time and they're like oh dad I skated today it was so fun me and -and so-and-so learned this trick you know or like we 180 the two the three stair you know and I'm like that's awesome, man. That's, that's so cool to hear. Well, let me know if I can help, you know, I just, I just, I just give them a, let me know if I can help with anything. And that means like, let me know if you need new wheels or whatever, you know, and my, the only thing that's a bummer is my youngest, he's 12 and I I make him wear a helmet and he hates it. Oh my gosh. Cause you got to revert back to when we were younger too, dude. Like, I mean, obviously our parents, yeah, our parents were not giving us no helmets. We were just renegades (laughs) out there just (laughs) going, you know, but you got to look at the things that these kids are doing nowadays that, that your 12 year old seeing is not what we were seeing back then. It's totally different. Especially what their dad's doing. Yeah, well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. For me, more it's it's about like I'm trying to teach him that there is like an order in life, and if he doesn't understand that there's an order and that he can get hurt doing this, then I'm not doing my job as a dad. You know. There you go. And he's like, Dad, when when do I get to take it off? You know. And I'm like, Well, you know, if you're gonna try and keep pushing the stairs to like three stair, four stair, five stair, six stair, seven stair, I'm not gonna be able to be there with you to help be your judgment. Right. You know, right. So, so let's see where you go with your skating. And, and at first it did, it made sense because he was skating like at the YMCA or he was dropping in on like 10 and 11 foot bowls and Damn. he did, wasn't complaining about wearing a helmet. Sure. But right. when he's learning, when he's learning heel flips in a parking lot, he's like, dad, this is dumb. What are we yeah. doing? Here? Uh, <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. He's like, I'm sweating like crazy and I don't need this helmet. And you know, and I was such a, a, a rule breaker that 
you know, I ask, I make him wear the helmet around me and I ask him to wear it, but you yeah. know, he's going to do what he's going to do. And that's, that's outside of my control. So <laughs> I, I understand it. And I'm not, I'm not militant about it. Like I try and roll up on him in the parking lot when he's skating with his friends. <laughs> he's got yeah. a helmet on. Totally. Isn't what it is crazy though about us? Like as we're older, like, you know, the, the rules that we did break as younger kids that we're just like, no, you got to wear a helmet. You got to make sure like, you know, it's yeah, so to... bizarre how I'm like that too, dude. Hey, but one of these days you're going to go down the street and find his helmet in a bush somewhere He's gonna and chuck yeah. that no, that's true. it's totally true and i i'm i'm okay with that i'm okay with I all of it it's well. just it's just that um also you know his friends aren't as good as skating as him and then if he's not wearing a helmet he's also an influence on them and then i have a relationship with it with their parents yeah. you know and like my 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 parents didn't have relationships with my skate friends parents yeah, yeah. you know that's what i mean true. it wasn't like this it wasn't like how can we be responsible parents together? You know, right. and that's what that's what I'm I'm practicing is yep. how can I be a responsible parent because that's how we show up for our kids. You know, totally. me showing up for my kid for him is is just encouraging him to be safe until he's got it under control. And right. at twelve, you know, I don't know, I don't, you know, it's it's kind of <laughs> sketchy sometimes yeah. too. He'll be trying to learn kickflips like right next to the corner of a ledge. Yeah, you know, and if he did land primo. <laughs> later like, i can see it as yeah. a parent yeah, you can dude, see yeah. that the board lands primo oh, he right. kicks out yeah. he hits his head on the corner of the ledge and like yeah that's kind of like i don't know i'm not a worry wart but it's like my responsibility to look out for danger in his path for when sure. he when he doesn't care about it totally respectable but as a parent too you 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 love him so you don't yeah. want anything to happen yeah to him. You, you look know? out for the best interest yeah. bro. yeah yeah well, and as that. he as he gets a little bit older it's getting harder and harder man he's like oh yeah He's in the tween age, tween stage right now where he's arguing about everything. <laughs> Those wings are almost out. They're ready to fly here. Man. Yeah, they are. They are. I mean, we're let, he just got a phone and he's going oh, to like wow. the local plaza, like meeting his buddies. And they, the, the coolest thing is there's a two, a three and a five stair at the local plaza. And there's a security guard. It might as well be a video game. Okay. <laughs> he, gets to skate, he gets to skate the stairs, hit Starbucks, hit Habit. You know, right. get a pizza and then run from the security guard all day. It's yeah, like, okay. it's yeah, it's so, <laughs> so cool, right? Sick. And yeah. then and then it's it's like it's probably like, I don't know, six blocks from our house. So we can skate to and from it. And you know, That's it's awesome. it's so cool. Now that he's got a phone, he can talk to us and he's just like Hey dad, I'm going to go down to the town center. I'm going to meet like so and so there and I'm like, "Oh, that's cool. How are you going to get there? What are you going to do?" He's like, "Oh, we're going to skate." I'm like, cool. He's so like, sick. and he tells me like, he's like, man, this one security guard's so old. You can like, you can be skating one place. And by the time you see him coming and by the time he gets there, you can move on to the next place. And it takes him like 10 minutes to get there. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, right. But that's amazing. That? That's amazing though, because I never talked to my parents about running from security guards know, and stuff right? like that. <laughs> like here, but you, you like relatable. Right, like yeah, you, no, like, I'm like that's amazing. I'm like, I just, I just biggest. Sometimes I don't always show it, but the biggest <laughs> smile is inside me. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm like, man, what you're describing right now is like my idea of a good time. Seriously, <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh my god, uh, like reflecting back, that's yes, it's that's what we did too. Exactly. And I was like, man, as you get better at skating and you start getting the like more in shape security guards, that's when it's fun. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, but also anyway, though, cool. but here, here's the thing. Jamie, though, is so you got to tell the kids, though, like, hey, you know, be, be, you know, the security guard's just doing his job, right? You know, be respectful, yeah, know come back later, you know what I mean? Like, don't blow the spot, you know? Yeah. There's stuff like that, too, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we talk about that a little bit. I mean, we talk about respect a lot. Yeah. Because I mean, a lot of times they don't show it, and that's definitely <laughs> okay. the topic that comes up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. You try your best, brother. <laughs> Dude, I love it. I mean, it, we're man. in the thick of it. 12, 14, 16. That's it. Yeah, you got wow. your work cut out. That's for sure. And then we got a girl that's 14, and she might as well be like two or three kids. Oh, wow. Like, it's it's, it's a lot of work. It's man. a lot. Of, it's you, a lot got of work. A, you got your hands full. You got your hands yeah. full. Yeah. 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 Speaking of getting being uh, hands full and everything, let's talk about the big news Chris yeah. Cole back on zero, man. Everything's 2020 is like uh, we got Chad Muska back on shorties. We got Chris Cole back on zero. Like that is amazing. And I think everybody was so stoked to hear that because it, it, that's where Chris Cole belongs. Yep. You know, yeah. that's where he belongs. Definitely. Dude. So congratulations yeah, I, on all that. Thank stuff. you, man. It's yeah. been, um, it's been fun working with him and, 
um, reestablishing a rapport and a, you know, like kind of a working relationship has been cool. And, you know, we're in totally different places than we were. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's been good, you know, and, and also having the, uh, intentionality with the relationship and, and identifying what wasn't so healthy in the past and how we could change that, you know, and actually having a sit down with him and talking through that Amazing. and kind of identifying what we want the relationship to be like and how we can make it work and what's expected of him and what's expected of me mm. and where I'm at and how I see it and where he's at and how he sees it. And it was great, man. It's like, it's a very, um, organic because it took like a year of us talking and yeah. kind of like working it out. Um, and also getting to know each other again, because we didn't really like, we weren't in each other's lives that often. It was very rare that we hung out right? for probably about four or five years. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Yeah. And even, even at the end of him writing for zero, I was really engaged in the company and he was really engaged in his, um, kind of contest career you know, as, as like street league and, totally. you know, even at the tail end of the Maloops and mm -hmm. all of that stuff was taken off. Um, you know, it just, that turned into such a big part of his life. Um, and he was like, you know, hanging and traveling with a different group of dudes. And, you know, it just, there was like this divide where it like was a fork in the road, you know, sure. like zero, zero stayed on this path. And then it was clear that, you know, he was, we were just growing in different directions. Yeah. And that, happens right that's yeah. just the nature of yeah. life you know yeah um how but, did the conversation come back in, into play for him riding for zero well i think he was you know plan b wasn't working out mm -hmm. and i think that was pretty clear it wasn't working for a while for whatever reason um and he knew that that wasn't going to be his future and so he made that decision without us even being in the picture you right. know maybe he had an idea that like oh it'd be cool to get back on zero or I'll, i think now that i think about it and i've heard about it i think it was either i'll see what's up with getting back on zero or i'll start my own thing right those are like kind of the two options right because mm -hmm. you know getting on another established brand you know for someone with that like that decorated of a history mm -hmm. is it's kind of hard to like make that fit. Yep. You yeah. know? And so starting your own brand would work because you can make it whatever you want to make it. Totally. And going back to zero would work because there's so much history and there's so much legacy that you can kind of like just tap right back into. Exactly. And that one obviously seems like the easiest as far as like how much heavy lifting he has to do at this point in his life. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we didn't have a relationship. So it's not really that easy when you think about it like that. I mean, we had a cordial relationship. Sure. Like we've always been like pretty cool, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like we were hanging out and skating together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to answer your question, Kelly, um, he started hanging out with Dane and Dane basically brought it up and was like, Hey, mm -hmm. I've been skating with Cole a lot. You know, he's in a good place. What do you think about him riding for zero? And I was, you know, I've immediately business, my <laughs> business mind said, oh, that's a great fit. Everyone would love that. All of his fans, all the zero fans, yeah. everyone would celebrate that. Totally. But then I got to, you know, that's more like a licensing deal. That's like, we're licensing his name and we're making skateboards with Chris Cole's name on it because if we don't have a current relationship and a current rapport that's like weekly then that's a business deal and right. that's okay but zero had zero has gotten to a place where it's kind of more like this organic we only have five employees mm -hmm. we have a small team everybody hangs out and everybody communicates well and everybody gets along well and so it's kind of like him coming to zero back in the beginning not in like the height of our business days right. you yeah. know yeah and when I say back at the beginning, meaning like when our distribution kind of crumbled and things like fallen, the footwear brand wasn't really like doing what it used to be doing. And it made sense for zero to kind of like reestablish its roots mm -hmm. and kind of rebuild itself. I took it way back, I, I, you know, because I didn't feel like there was going to be any quick fix for us out there. I felt like, you know, we like if, for example, if you have some crazy partnership with Billabong or Sector 9 or, or whatever, like that would have given us the resources in order to rebuild. Sure. But then it would have been this like bizarro version of itself. Yeah. I felt yeah. like it really made the most sense to like really humble ourselves and go, okay, 
what are the best parts of this? Let's go back and let's rediscover the best parts of what we've had and what we've done. And let's try and reinvigorate that and organically grow that again. Yeah. Yes. And then, and then that's what we've been doing for the past two to three years, maybe even a little longer, four years. Mm -hmm. And after we left Dwindle and to have Cole just plug into that, like it felt really forced. Mm -hmm. So it was like, hey, that sounds like a great idea, but let's slow down and take some time and talk about it. And, you know, I need to really sit down with Cole and, you know, we need to talk about the past. We need to talk about the present. We need to talk about the future mm -hmm. and kind of see if we can have a meeting of the minds. Yeah, so yeah. I know this is a long winded explanation. No, but it's great. It's worthy, no. Totally worthy. Yeah, yeah. It, it really, it really was that. So the conversation came up about a year and a half ago, or maybe a year and year and eight months. Yeah. And, and it took probably a year until we were ready to like, you know, go with it. And then we kept it a secret for about six months as we planned it. That's what Cole was saying. He was like, I'd have to like change my board and then go to here and take a photo and then change my, but like he said, it was just a, just a back and forth battle, you know? Which is, yeah, which is fine. It, I mean, a lot of people do that. Yeah. And it was cool that people were speculating this when he quit plan B, mm. but it wasn't time and it wasn't ready. So the rumors were already going. Yeah. And then people got tired of waiting thinking, oh, maybe it's not true or maybe it won't ever happen. And I think that a lot of people started kind of giving up that it might not happen right around the time it happened. So I think <laughs> it like really worked organically perfect. And I think timing is everything. Yeah. Timing's yeah, everything. Sometimes agree. you can't plan timing and it just happens. No. And that's, that's the timing, you know, mm -hmm. but I think yeah. it was, like you said, I think it was just, it was kind of out of nowhere. We were uh, uh, this Instagram post. Everybody was just like, Oh my God, oh, it was, this is incredible. Like he's back real. on it's zero. Real. It's, it's real. so sick. <laughs> so sick. Yeah. It was, it was cool. And it was so good. Like once we had the meeting of the minds and once we started working together and outlining what our roles were going to be and how we were going to execute in those roles, and it started really like feeling really good, like getting to a point where it was like probably more real and more balanced than it ever was in the past, Amazing. because we're both like, you know, more mature versions of ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that he's even he's even, you know, kind of grown a mm -hmm. lot in the last like year and a half like since we've been in the discussion. So it just kind of got better and better and started making more sense. And as we, as our relationship, you know, got closer, it's, we started having more and more mutual respect and more and more, you know, better communication. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I don't know. I, yeah. It felt really natural and the timing was perfect. Yeah. And you're right. There hasn't been a whole lot of good news this year I and know. to have Cole and to have Cole and Musk reuniting with shorties in a, in the same week is it's so, so yeah. it's pretty amazing. Cool. Bro. Yeah, man. Not and really. like Cole was saying too, I mean, just kind of getting back he said something to the, the effect of like, just how, how well you guys work together, you know, with graphics and this and that, like he said, it was just kind of like this, like organic, like he just, he for um, something to the sense of like how he forgot of just how well you guys meshed, you know? Yeah. 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 I, I would agree with that. And I think that, I think that I, um, I think that in the, in the peak of my career or even my business career, in the peak of my success, I don't think I was the best version of myself. And I think that in this rebuilding process, I feel that I've gone through some, you know, personal challenges and personal changes and started to work on better communication habits and starting to like get perspective of my life's priorities and not placing so much emphasis on every little decision mm. and being and, and, and really practicing a flexibility and an understanding um, so like, you know, cause we had this plan that Cole was going to drop a video part the day, the day, you know, on Monday, like two weeks ago, Yeah, that was the plan. And then, you know, he had a couple of injuries while he was filming and then we didn't get the rights to the song. We were just going to do like a minute, not even a full video part, just like a minute of Chris Cole celebrating zero. Yeah. Yeah. We were excited about it. And that's what he was doing that, like changing the board for, cause he was filming, mm -hmm. you know, when he was filming in a private setting, he would ride a zero board. Cause you don't want to have a video part of all blank boards, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, right. So he would ride a zero board and then he'd go to the park and ride one of his like spray paint boards or whatever. Um, but you know, what happened was, is that um, we turned in the ad that, you know, we asked Thrasher, like, when's this ad hit? 
and they were like, you know, uh, September 15th, mm -hmm. you know, or September 20th or something. And sure. so we turned in the ad and the ad and the, and the issue got seen a week earlier than any other issue had and like whatever, <laughs> su a super long time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so the week before it dropped, the week before it dropped, we were in, we were on a, you know, like a work call. Like we do these zoom calls, like basically what we're doing now yeah. and for our, for our zero group calls or like work. And, um, a text just popped up on someone's, on someone's feed and they just put it right in the group chat and like the, not the, not the, the team group chat, but the employee group chat. And, um, someone was holding the magazine and it's like five <laughs> days before we're supposed to release. Wow. And so I think the old version of me would have just been like, so control, trying to control that circumstance. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, okay, cat's out of the bag. What do we do? All right. We got to We got to own the news. One person has the magazine in Milwaukee. That's all we know. <laughs> in Milwaukee, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And right. the reason the reason that's it's the Milwaukee is that's where Brown Printing, the publishing company, is. Okay. So so it basically got shipped to the local shops the next mm. day, and they saw it before everyone else. Wow. So, but I was like, still, California is going to get it before the weekend. You know, this is like Thursday or something. Yeah, sure. Right. You know, or Wednesday, and so we were supposed to drop the following Monday. So I just like, Hey guys, I got to get off the call. I got to figure this out. I just got off the call and I was like, you know what, what, what are we losing? And I go, all we're losing is not having all of this stuff happen, like lightning in a bottle all in one day. Right. And then yeah. I was like, it doesn't matter. Like, we just got to get in front of this. And I feel like I was like having a meeting with myself <laughs> about like, about how to like drop this news. And I wasn't trying to like act like it was the biggest news in the world, but for us, it was big news. We've been talking yeah, about yeah. it a while. We'd been dreaming about how it was going to go down. Mm -hmm. And now the plan is foiled. So I just called Cole and I said, Hey man, um, the mag's out early. I just got a text at a photo of it. It'll probably be in people's hands in the next few days. Um, this is my idea. And I just like, I just think we take your ad, we break it into two sliders and we just like own the news yeah. and just tell everybody. And then and I was like, this is my wording. What do you think? Welcome back. And then, and then your name. And That's then, all you um, need to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and tell, yeah. Them the, tell the people the date the boards drop. Because, you know, in, in theory, the idea was, is like, you know, you, you tell everybody about it and you say a board's available now, wouldn't that be awesome? You know, but sure. it kind of was even better because now we could say boards are available on the 14th. And then the day before the 14th, we could say boards available tonight at midnight. Mm. You work with it, right? Yeah. You work with what you got. Yeah. What would the totally. old Jamie would have done? I think uh, he looks to the I, think, <laughs> I don't know what I would have done. Like Jeremy. My friend Jeremy's here. Can you say hi? What, what up, up, Jeremy? What's what up, up, dude? Yeah. 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 What's good? Nice one, bro. Yeah. Thank oh, you, yeah. bro. Jer yeah. Jeremy grew up snowboarding in, in uh, Utah, but he's a great skateboarder, too. Amazing. Uh, nice. I would see him randomly um, in four and ones sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the 411 guy over here yeah, just I love it. Um, no, but I don't know what I would have done, but I think that I would have stressed really hard about it all and I don't have that in me anymore. Yeah. I just was like I was like, okay, what can I control and what can I not control? Yeah. I can't control that the mags out. What can I control? How sure. we break the news. Right. And you know, just kind of just kind of talk thinking about that, having having positive self-talk and then calling Cole and asking him what, you know, my, asking him what he, his thoughts on my plan were. And mm -hmm. he was like skating. He's like, sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> sounds, sounds good. And I was like, I was like, all right, well, that's what we're doing. I'll send you some assets. If you want to post about it today, he's like, yeah, I'll just, whenever you guys post, I'll post right after. Amazing. 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 But yeah. also we're, we're in a different age though. We're in the digital age where back where you're talking about old Jamie, like you have control over everything. You have control over the ads you have control over, but now it's social media. Like every, nothing's a secret anymore, you know, as we've come yeah, to find ironically, out. Ironically though, we got foiled by the old way. We got foiled by an ad. I, by well, that's true, but yeah. Yeah. You're getting foiled by it, by having the old thing, but you're, the, the digital is taking over it's that. It's still taking over yeah. yeah. True. That's how we're going to yeah. see it. It's so weird yeah. how that works. No. But that news in yeah, general, but, that news in general is so powerful that that's all you need at that point. That's true. You know what I mean? You don't need this video part to go along with it. It's like. Uh, we. That's, I mean, that's where we were at. Like yeah. once it broke, I was like, okay, people just wanted the news and that's good enough. They don't even know if there's ever going to be a video part. They don't even care. Yeah. Right. Straight and up. so, and so we, we had like 
we didn't have the rights to the song yet. So then we were like, okay, well, it's not dropping on Monday regardless. And the, the rights came a week later, but we were like, oh, no, it's like, maybe we should just make it, maybe we should just film, keep filming and we'll see what, what it turns into because this isn't necessary. Yeah. So I said, you know, he was like, well, I'm going out on Saturday with Vinny, you know, our filmer. And then I'm, you know, I'm going out tonight and we're lighting up a spot. And I'm like, dude, how about we just go skate this weekend and have fun and I'll just film you with my phone and we'll get some assets and promote this thing. And he goes like, "Why I shouldn't go film? <laughs> and I was He's like, like no, who is let's... this? Wait. And, I, and I, go, I, go, I go, well, first off, you don't have to ever film tricks if you don't want to. You've already done your work. You've already put in the time. You've already done all that. So if you want to do that, that's, you know, that's you. That's up to you. Um, Legend. But where I'm at, people just want to see you and I doing stuff together. Yes. So like, mm-hmm. let's just go skate some benches and film some flat ground. So... You know, I love that stuff and yeah, I love filming dude. with my phone. So I totally. was like, let's just, and we just met at a spot. He had a couple spot ideas. We met at a spot and I filmed a couple ledge lines of them. And, and, um, I put that out on my Instagram and then, so sick. you know, we put something else on zeros and we shot some photos and, you know, he's still a workhorse. Like he's still Hell down yeah. to put it down. So we went to like a couple spots over a couple days and just filmed some like cool stuff, you know, just made sure we stayed out of skate parks. Yeah. You yeah. know, he he gets enough of that already on his Instagram. Sure. We don't we don't need more of it. So yeah. even if he's just skating flat ground on a parking lot, at least he's not at a skate park. So yeah. we just focused on that and had fun and goofed off and you know, he's a skate nerd, I'm a skate nerd. Like I'm filming a flat ground edit of him and he's talking about the way he does tricks and he's just got to get his shoulders to rotate and I'm talking through it with him. I'm like, "Yeah, if your foot's in the corner." And we're talking like the <laughs> mechanics of it yeah. all and so I realized that you know, we're different in lots of ways, but in lots of ways, we have a lot of commonalities and that's how it always worked. Like Mm. whenever, whenever, um, you know, we were filming video parts back in the day, I was helping him by talking through the tricks and almost like a, almost like a golf caddy, as I imagine. Uh. Yeah. You, I don't, I don't play golf. That's a good way to break it down. Totally. It makes sense. I I don't play, I don't play golf, but I talked to Drake Jones about golf caddying one time and he, he was a caddy for a long time for Mm. like semi-professional golfers. Oh. And Drake was a great golfer. Hell yeah. But Drake told me that basically the caddy is to think bigger picture and to help with all the small decisions with a different perspective Mm. that the golfer who's so focused on the game may not, might not be able to see or and, and so I always like thought about that and I was like, wow, that's, that's really cool. I didn't know that like that your, your um, caddy is like your voice of reason. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so, and so when Cole and I are filming stuff together, you know, if a trick's not working, I'm suggesting options. I'm like talking about like, oh, what if you did this trick instead? Or what if, you know, you know, you did it this way or that way. Mm-hmm. And what if I filmed it like this, it would still, anyway, I realized we did that forever. Yeah, we did yeah. that for so long, like through all those video parts, like when the very beginning, when we were actually, I was actually filming him before we like started hiring filmers. Um, I was actually filming him. That's what our dialogue would be at the beginning of lines, you oh. know, and we'd be, we'd be changing tricks and like coming up with new ideas. Just like you guys know mm-hmm. your filmer, when you're in, when you're in the thick of it, your filmer is your dog. Yeah. He's like, yeah. he's, it's like you and him. Yep. Mm-hmm. And like, that like that is the bond that is making it happen without him encouraging you and without you your guys's rapport like you're dead in the water totally totally yeah Yeah. and so we spent a few days on a really mellow level just like goofing around and you know kind of like playing those roles and it it was so cool yeah it was really cool and sometimes a lot that kind of stuff pops off more than like a very calculated video part or ad because at the end of the day too like you said before man I want to see Jamie Thomas and Chris Cole just yeah. goofing off in a parking lot yeah, and like having yeah. fun, yeah. having sure. fun. That's what I want to see. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I, Reynolds posts mellow lines of him just cruising and, you know, alling over a little bit. It, it's so rad. Yeah. That's what I it's watch it all so these days. Rad. I love yeah. the simpleness of like, you can just go out and film cool tricks that you want to film. Yeah. And there's no like heaviness yeah. about like, did yeah. I just put that out? Should I have put that out? No, dude, put that shit out. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I think that Reynolds and Ellington are great examples of yes. I can't get enough of it. I just show me just show me yourself yeah. like living in the wild and <laughs> skating and like doing tricks and like have a you know, Ellington where you like he puts to fall in where he like does a roll and then catches his hat. Like yeah. that's a trick. Yeah. Like he just, that's a trick. And I'm, 
you know, and Seriously. I just see Ellington's post, like three flip no slide on a curb, all oh, sick and just... some weird shoes. And I'm like, I just sent him a text like, I love this. That I could watch right. this all day. More yeah. of this, please. Definitely. And so totally. when talking to Cole, when talking to Cole, I actually had to talk him out of going filming for the weekend. <laughs> so I was like, look, man, if you go out tonight and light stuff up, you're gonna you're not gonna be any use to me at the ledges. <laughs> <laughs> we, can't, we, can't, we can't go have fun. Come on. Jamie, yeah. you really you really changed, dude. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I love this. Yeah. I love it. I have a clear understanding for what my role is now. Yeah. I think that I didn't always have that before. And my, my role is to encourage these guys to do what they want to do and to shine and continue doing what they love. And but you don't think you were doing that? Like, uh, we'll, we'll use new Jamie and old Jamie. You don't think you were doing that old Jamie, though? You were encouraging I people think, maybe in a I different that, way? I think I was doing that, but I just think that I was more rigid in what we had to do. And I think that I didn't, I wasn't as accepting if either someone disagreed or, and it's not like I fought with them. Sure. You know, but I had a more difficult time when I set my sights on something, letting go of it. Mm. And even if I had, even if I was like envisioning and dreaming something up for someone, or if someone said, Hey, I want to do this trick. And then I would be like, okay, it's my job to help you get the trick done. I'm the excuse eliminator. I'm Bondo in the crack. I'm mm -hmm. putting the plywood in. I'm d knob in the rail. I'm doing whatever I got to do because that's our collective goal. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I had a really difficult time letting go of that vision. Whereas now I feel like my priorities are the relationship mm -hmm. and that's that. over the trick. Respect. And so now my priority is if the relationship is intact, and we are good and we're supporting each other and we're we're making something happen the trick is like it, it's not as important and we can yeah. make it we can trans we can make it translate we just have to be creative in how we're going to make it translate into something that has emotion or feeling or that is great to watch yeah and so that is the difference the old one the old me would have said find a new song, call a friend's band. We're getting a different track. We're getting three tricks this weekend and we're jamming the part out for a minute with the old track. That's what I would have done. Okay. Oh, wow. Right. Wow, right. Wow, man. Damn. Salute to your growth, bro. I, I mean, I think that's, <laughs> I think, seriously, I think that's fucking amazing to, you know, obviously see yourself as, you know, from the past. And now you see that, you know, you, you're trying to correct that and in, in any shape, any way, shape, or form, bro. And I like I, I commend you on that, bro. Good shit. Straight Thank you. Up. I appreciate it. You know what is the best feeling about that? Like, I appreciate you saying that, Jerron. But going, like Cole coming in and me asking him on Friday before the boards drop, him coming in on Friday and me talking to him and going like, hey, do you mind coming by the office so we can like talk about a good plan for the weekend? And um, he, because I'd love to, you know, make sure that you use your time wisely or that we, we do the best, you know, we can at putting something out. He came by and I guess like, first off, man, I know you got a family and I know that you're sore. Like he's been beating himself up skating and filming, you know, like skating in parks and stuff and filming tricks occasionally for a couple of years. And then to try and go back and to really get back into the streets. Like, I know how tough that is. That's yeah, not, man. that's not easy to do, man. It's a lot of, there's a lot of mental, mental drama mm -hmm. that comes with that. And, and that's not even to mention the physical stress that we put, that you put on your body. Yeah. You know, and he's 38. Yeah. So I know what that's like, and I've done that. So I was just like, hey, first off, I just want to let you know that, like, I know that you got, you know, his hip was black. And mm, I was like, I know damn. you're, I know you're beat up. Like, let's try and let's do something fun. And let's like find a way to make something happen that, you know, is not putting more stress on you. Yeah. And he was just like, he looked at me and was just like, he smiled and goes, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> this is the best. Yes. <laughs> And uh, it, it's that when I, what I, my point of that is, is not to re say the same thing over again. Sure. My point, my point was to say that he was appreciative that I was uh, understanding yes. to what he was facing and that I was willing to be and that I was trying to encourage him to relax a little right. and let's have fun with this release instead of making it something serious and let's push that thing out and you can put that part out at any time or you could never put it out we could just you know you could trickle it out one trick at, at a time there's no i love it i love it it's yeah, really rad yeah, it's really, man all in all it was really cool and it was a, obviously a success the midnight thing yeah. really worked we put up these limited edition signed boards signed and numbered boards he signed them i numbered them Rad. you know and um 
It was really cool, man. It was, it was like, it worked and he didn't have to do anything. He didn't have to stay up late, but he did. He stayed up till midnight and posted Sick. this board, yeah, this board. Were you just checking out your switch flip, switch flip, switch Manny real quick? <laughs> <laughs> you caught me, Jamie, you caught me. Mid conversation, I'm like <laughs> checking. Like, no, yeah, Jamie, to tell you the truth, I, 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 I checked the recording stuff to make sure that <laughs> everything is still recording. <laughs> He's like, wait, he's like, wait, man. There's been a lot of talk about Cole, man. I, I want to make sure my uh, switch Manny is on. Make sure, and plus, I do have to make sure it's still playing. You know what I mean? like, yeah, but no, I have to make sure shit's That's still amazing. recording, dude, because I can't. <laughs> that was good. Uh, well, congratulations, uh, yeah. Yeah, first dude, of all. Thank you. I think all enough, I man. was stoked. I can't. I mean, I the, from seeing all the comments and everybody was like super. I mean, like I said, it, it's where he belongs. Yeah. You know, yeah. with Chris Cole, zero, you know, man, it's such a good. And you got a good squad right so, now, oh too. Oh, my God. Solid. I'm, I'm a big yeah, Dane. Oh. Uh, Adam Arunsky. I'm a big fan yeah. of that dude because he he loves zero. Like you could tell he oh, yeah. grew up and is like, that's I, I want to be part of zero when I yeah. grow up. And that's yeah. what he did. That, that's incredible. Yeah. Uh, Dylan, <laughs> Dylan Jabe, Dylan Jab. Yeah, yeah. A, that a, kid, a, bro. You've got the new mic mo on your squad. Yeah. How do you feel about that? <laughs> You've got the new mic mo. You really do. I think I think I'd agree with you. Man, that he is a, he. What a bright future that kid has. I love that. Wow, yeah, he's amazing. Wow, he, he's just playing with it right now. I think it's crazy. I know, man. right? It's crazy, yeah. dude. And from what you know, you see him skate in the parks, and you're like, wow, that's great. But then you see him in the streets, and you're like, oh, that's you know, that's where you yeah. really see. I heard like he's filming that. a VX part. Is that true? Yeah, that's the, that's the word. Uh, okay. We're working, <laughs> okay. We're working on we're working on an AM video right now, and um, you know we we invited him to have a full part in it. So we'll see what he wants to do. Amazing. Oh, yeah. I, I think I had, and that's a good lesson, right? He's a he's a great lesson. Like I had an idea for what this AM video part was going to be like, and I went to I was at the I was at Poods one day talking to to Dylan about it, and he was just like. I would really love, you know, I don't have anything against being in the video or being this or that, but I would really love to have my first part, like stand alone. Yeah. And like, I really have an idea for what I want to do and how I want to do it. And I was just like, it, <laughs> I, I spent about five minutes like going, dude, what's the video going to be like without Dylan in it? Uh, and, and, and I kind of like got froze on the spot and I, I, um, I had a hard time like taking the news and it was the first time I got stuck like that in a while because I I'd, I'd already envisioned so much happening with this new AM video. Sure. And I was like so far down the road with it. And then for him to say that, I was like, what does that mean? Like, does that mean he doesn't want to ride for zero? Does that mean? And he's just like, he's like, I just, I have an idea what I want to do. And you know, I'd, I'd love to do it this way. Mm. And I was like, I kind of tripped out for a bit and then I was driving and I was like, all right, man, well, let me think about it and I'll, I'll hit you up. I was driving home and I was just like, all right, what are you doing? This kid's phenomenal. He's, he's telling you that basically he has a vision mm. and you're like stuck on your old vision. Like if this kid's got a vision, you let him go, you let him do whatever it is that he wants to do. And you figure out a way to work with it. That's what you do. And I'm like talking to myself. I'm having this conversation with myself. Another meeting. I was, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another meeting, another <laughs> meeting. And, I, and I'm thinking to myself, like, basically he's telling me something that I would have told like Ed Templeton when I was like, whatever, it had been more like 19 yeah. or 20, but, and I'm like, how can I, how can I even say that I want to put him in any kind of box? Right. So I just texted him back and was like, Hey dude, sorry, I got hung up back there. I'm, I'm down to support whatever it is that you want to do. Let me know how I can help you make that happen. Amazing. Rad. And then I spent the next two days trying to figure out what I was going to do with the rest <laughs> okay. of the video. <laughs> <laughs> because what was most important at that moment was, is for him to know that I got his back and then I'm, I'm down to work with him on whatever it is that he wants to do. And mm. then the rest of the guys that I've been envisioning something for, they don't even know what I've been envisioning. Right, so right. I can easily change that. Right. So I just had to like, I had this kind of ego battle of like, oh, Dylan's changing the whole video, but it wasn't that at all. It was like, maybe I was stuck in something that wasn't appropriate or relevant. And so I started seeing it from like, I gave myself a couple of days to think about it. And then I came up with 
you know, this episodical thing where you do four episodes and you have an intro for each episode and maybe it's one guy in it, maybe it's two guys in it. Perfect. And then they yeah. all can have their own look and feel, but they have this intro style that is similar to time all together. And then when I came up with that, I was like, oh, I'm such an idiot for tripping on that. And then I, <laughs> not really, I didn't call it. No, but you know, that, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I know exactly what you mean though. It's, 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 it's just uh, like, seeing that person's vision. And like you said, like your, 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 your younger self would have had that same conversation with Ed Templeton, maybe, yeah. you know, yeah. and you're just like, I mean, the, the, not, not to take anything away from the other AMs, but this kid is phenomenal. And if he wants to have his, his first video part, kind of a standalone ish, mm -hmm. man, he deserves, bro. He deserves it, dude. He is he such a good skateboarder he does but not only does he deserve it because deserve is like entitlement or whatever mm -hmm. it's more like it's more like it may make the most sense because his style is not traditional zero right mm -hmm. so how i could potentially how we could integrate him into the team and into our videos this will be the opportunity for me to work with him and make something that he's really stoked on, but also have some zero twist to it. So we're like transitioning from where he's at mm -hmm. as a part of what we're doing. And I saw that as the opportunity. And then I saw this episodical thing being really cool and it would give multiple people like him a place to shine. Yeah. So I mean, anyway, I mean, we have a couple other guys that are not like, not like his sheer talent and his feet because his talent is like it's like in his ability to visualize a trick and make it happen and that his feet are so talented he can tell them what to do like hands yeah they can do it right you know um we, we obviously see that you saw that with mike mo you yep. saw that with chris cole you know even guy has that to a bit but but the finesse and the and the skill of the feet is like it's a whole nother thing you know and for, for him to watch all those other guys and then to actually have the physical ability to apply it is so cool to watch. Oh it's so God. cool to watch on his Instagram. Like you see him progressing each week, right? Um, you know, on his Instagram. Oh my God. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I've been following that kid since he was like a little, where, where was he in Hawaii? Some little yeah. kid and just, um, just well, it's he, amazing. He was like, yeah, I grew up watching you on the barracks. Like when you had your recruit, I was like, dude, that was 2010. <laughs> that was 10 years ago. He's like, yeah, I was six. Yeah. I was like, what? Wow. Dude, you were skating yeah. that young? Wait, how old is he? I'm sorry. 16, I believe. He's 16. That's wow. crazy. He's 16. Let me, I, you know, going back to your old video parts, and this is kind of going on the, the the Dylan thing when you were saying like you want to help facilitate him on your going through your old video parts. Was there a video part that you had that you weren't really super happy with? Because somebody could have maybe helped facilitate you in that way that you want to facilitate Dylan to make that video part even better than it is, than it was. You see what I'm saying? I mean. Yeah. To be honest with you, Welcome to Hell is my first video part that I was proud of. You're proud. Okay. Yeah. The right. ones before that, I didn't have a system to what I was doing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm sure you guys can relate to this. You just went out and you filmed whatever you filmed. And when the deadline was up, you, you just tried your best to put it together in whatever exactly. way. And it was like, back then you were transferring from tape to tape too, when you were making it. So you didn't really get to see what it was going to look like and then train and then rearrange it. You know, mm -hmm. sure. you were like, you were really going beta to beta. Like the, all the video parts I did before that was, it was like, a uh, high tech version of two VCRs, right. you know, like that, that's how you were making video parts. You were like, okay, I imagine this trick going before this trick and this trick going before the, and you would just try it. You would seam up, you'd back up the beta, you'd line it up and then you'd lay the next trick. And then you'd go back, you'd line up the beta mm -hmm. and you'd lay the next trick. And every once in a while you could replace that trick if it looked horrible, but you can't go back three or four tricks and replace all those, mm -hmm. or you're just undid all your work. Right. So, back in the day and i don't know if you guys ever you guys are a little younger than me but the first videos i made you write each trick on a time card and you lay them all out on the floor and you imagine what the tricks are going to look oh, like going wow. from one trick you, to the next you got to visualize your whole video part yeah, with music yeah. 
essentially too. And the music, like you really could only edit so much to the music. Sure. Like it was really hard without a computer editing system. You don't, you can't see the waveforms. Yeah. You, you kind of know like, oh, you know, you, you got the music, you lay the music first, right. and then you lay the trick, then you lay the next trick. And, you, and then you're like, oh, that looks terrible to that. That trick's too fast and the music's mm -hmm. slow. And you're like, okay, the music's slow here. And you go to your, you know, I go to all my flashcards and I'm like, what's a slow trick with a long write up and roll away? <laughs> and you put that one, you're like, put that one in there. Right, right, <laughs> anyway, right. My point is, is that I had no method to the filming. I had no method to the editing really. Mm -hmm. And I was just like putting whatever footage together and, that's kind of what we were all doing. That's true. But between he Toy Machine's Heavy Metal, which you guys may or may not have seen, like maybe you have Josh Kalis' part mm -hmm. to oh, Marvin yeah. Gaye, which was yeah. dope. So sick. Um, at any rate, uh, that video was the last one we made on Beta, and Welcome to Hell was the first one we made on Media 100, which you know was the old school, uh, actually not the oldest old school, but it was like a the, one of the first high tech video editing equipment. So Tom Yetto invested in one of those, mm -hmm. and I made all these weird little like small fan club videos trying to learn how to use it. I really wanted to learn how to use it. And so um, this is, I, I have a long winded way of answering every question as you can see. But <laughs> I actually I love, this, love it. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing it dude. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> My point of this whole story was, is that all the parts before that, I didn't even know what I was doing. Yeah, I had right. like, I had like 10 tail slides and 10 kick flips and you know what I mean? Like I, on ledges, on the same size ledges, like 10 tail slides on a shin high ledge. Like how many of those do you need? <laughs> yeah. you know? right. um, yeah. When I did that beta video with, and I was in the driver's seat, I was the one laying trick after trick. I was like, this is painful. I want to get good tricks together. I want to get a system of like visualizing what you want to do. I want to write down ideas and I want to like go and execute. And I want to like, I want to build something that's worth something. And right. that was the like vision for welcome to hell was like, I want to make something good. And then right around that same time, Tom Yetto got a, a did, you know, a, a video editing uh, program and computer and stuff. And th it was free reign. It was like, yeah, do whatever you want, man. It here's like, a camera. It, it, here's a, it opened up a whole world. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Big time. And I we, started editing the parts as we went and I yeah. was like, you know, whoa, you can lay the music and then like try tricks and then go out and film tricks to fit this to slow fit section it. of the song. <laughs> I would just be like, my mind was blown. Awesome. And then I just started dreaming about skating in a whole new way. Like my shower experiences were totally different. From that <laughs> I, I think of my best ideas in the shower, by the yes. way. Yeah. It's funny because I think when we, we when you were here on your episode, I think we talked about that as you were you would actually pick the song first and then you would mm. you would uh, film according to that song. Best case scenario, that's the way that to do was it. the way wow. to do because it. Because right. you, then you know how fast you're pushing. You know, you got a slow song. You don't need to be hauling ass all around town. <laughs> Very true. Sure. No. Sure. You wow. know, and I think you're like if you got a really fast song, you're like lines won't work. And then, and you know, and if you got a song with really fast beats, you're yeah. like, okay, this is a single heavy song, lots of fisheye footage. There you and go. if you got a really slow, you got a really slow song, then you're like, okay, we got lines and we got long lens tricks. And you got the, the slow song with the, or the fast song with the slow kind of mm -hmm. interlude and you could put yeah, the slow mo. Best case scenario. Best yeah. case scenario, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It work. Before you start filming a video, do you, is there any videos that like literally came out exact way that you thought about it going into it? Or do they mostly change kind of a lot. I think with new information, you're constantly evolving, right? Mm, yeah. You know, mm. you got new inputs, you got new inputs coming in and it's, they're, they're adjusting your ideas, but you have a, you have a script and you're sticking to the script in some regard, but you're like, the script is always evolving and you're always like, you know, and there's some things you didn't plan for that are happening better than, and some things that you imagined happening one way and they're just not happening at all. Yeah. And, okay all those things kind of come together in a serendipitous way to make whatever it is you make. And I mean, I think with like a lot of people, when you make video parts or you make videos, you're not necessarily sure if you like them or hate them when you're done. You're just like, all right, that's the best that I have to give today. And I don't even have perspective of it because I've been so in the trenches and so involved in it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to take a break from this for a year and come back right. and see if it's worth the crap. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> and that that's funny you say, because like, you know, it, it, it evolves as you go. I mean, just for example, the, the, the one more try the five Oh down the rail. One more try. A con mm. iconic, right? You didn't, you couldn't have planned that. You probably saw it in the timeline and went like, Oh dude, that, that fits perfectly. Like I got to well, just, I didn't even know. I didn't even know Lee was filming. That. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, right. 
but in I the was time, just telling I was just telling the bros that were there is like that felt <laughs> not as good as I imagined it to feel. I imagined it feeling better than that. Yeah. So I got to give it one more. Right. And then, and then I um I did a few more than that. Oh wow! But I found one that looked like you know I don't know whatever that if I really knew what I was doing that's what it would look like. Well, <laughs> so the I one that, that you one. the one that you originally did the one more try I mean for the av- for the average viewer I'm like that was perfect yeah. you know <laughs> that works. but then I went back and looked at it and looked at it and I could see like you know the board kind of went down a little bit kind of come came off yeah, your feet a little bit a little yeah you know and then I was like oh okay I I can see why you know feelings everything yeah. in skating right you got you have to have it feel good for yourself you know yeah. but then when you lay it in the timeline you see that it works with the song and you're like do one more trot boom and then you do the perfect one and oh my god like yeah. couldn't have planned that you know what i no, mean you, like you couldn't have planned it and and it turns out to be iconic well t- to be honest i was trying to fill time to that that the end song by the doors <laughs> yeah. oh yeah music. yes i was like this song's so epic i really only have this many tricks at the end that feel good <laughs> And then the idea came up to, to do the one more and to have the 5-0 twice. Cause you know, I was a real critic of showing multiple angles, even though we did it a lot. I always felt like, I always felt guilty about it. I was always like, man, you can't do that too much. You play that out, you overplay that. And mm. I'd watch other videos and be all snobby about it. <laughs> right, right, someone right, showed, right. If someone showed three or four angles, I'd be like, oh man, they're really milking that trick. Yeah. <laughs> right. Some oh, tricks God. deserve it though. Some I tricks know. deserve yeah, it for right, sure. Right, yeah. I mean, I that's, just me. that's just me being competitive and trying to like, you know, I don't know, whatever. No, I'm, we I'm all have forward. our own. We yeah. all have our own, you know, even if something is too, too much slow motion, you know, it's too much. Slow, you yeah. know, we all have our mm-hmm. own things, you know, but, um, totally. Wow. I don't know. I just love that. Like I said, the one more, tr- it's just iconic. And it's so funny to hear that you were just trying to fill time. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, inc- well, that's more it, dramatic. It's like, let's go. Yeah. It's, let's it's let's so show. good. It was also like these two five O's are cool, but they're cool for different reasons. And how do we use them both? And then that one more try makes it sense, makes sense. Like you're, yeah. you're, you're telling a story, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah. And then we did one in chomp. We did it like a, like a kick foot foot plan on the table. We like spoofed yeah. it. Yeah. By the way, iconic part as well. Like I, chomp. Yeah. I always hear part two coming. Chomp. Uh, uh. Jamie, that's, that's good, huh? We heard yeah. that. We got a bunch of I've been hearing that for quite some time. No, but it's just rad because you've been involved with just iconic parts, you know, iconic videos. It's, I mean, history, you know, it's, it's incredible, man. Definitely. Well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, you dedicate your life to something and, you know, it's possible to do a bunch of whatever you dedicate yourself to your life to. <laughs> sure, you know? yeah. sure. And I am. Um, I dedicated my life to video parts for, you know, a solid, I don't know, 20 years. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, you could dedicate least. yourself the whole time, but it never can turn out the way that you want it, you know, for but sure. like I said, uh, just, you know, yeah, I think that comes like, down to, that comes down to drive and vision right. and obviously having some talent to like execute. Yeah. But, but if you got the drive and you got the thirst to, to do it, you know, um, you see people they, they come they overcome crazy circumstances yeah totally. and, that's a big part of it yeah and it's really interesting that a lot of that drive comes from you know having something deep inside you that's like you got something to prove yeah you know and and sometimes people burn through that quick and sometimes people have an everlasting just yeah. something to prove it turns it turns more into something to prove to myself than something to prove to everybody else yeah. you know eventually sure. you see athletes of all kinds they start off with like you know without a dad or mm-hmm. i think we might have talked about this on mm-hmm. the the last time but they start off without a dad or a dad that's not giving them enough attention or not fitting in or coming from a small town and they felt like the underdog mm-hmm. and they're just like playing into that their own rocky story yeah yes you know? Right. Yeah. Definitely. And I think that I played into that at like seven years old and you were, I tried to keep that repeating. Yeah. I'm like into Rocky 15 now in my life. <laughs> <laughs> There's many a skater just like you though, Jamie, Rick, in that sense of like, obviously they, some of them not, might not be as successful as you, but they have that drive and you know, wherever it takes them, it takes them and mm. you know, they thrive off it. But yeah, dude. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah, thing. Yeah. I, I, I talked to Chris Jocelyn about it once and 
That beast. kid has a drive. Like, he's oh, got a yeah. fire. My he's goodness, got a fire man. inside. And Truly, you could see I, it. Yeah, I love to see people with that fire, you know. Yeah. And now that I'm, I'm a lot, I'm a lot more on the sidelines, and I'm like, I'm like riding into the sunset right now. And um, I, I love to see young, young dudes coming up with like, just. You know that emoji with the like blowing the like the, the air oh, yeah, out of the nose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love a mat like that's what like <laughs> like Nija, Nija, that cab flip back lift oh, or whatever. Oh my god, bro. Yeah. It just <sighs> you know, I don't know. I just get so hyped on seeing like when he flexes when he rolls away. Yeah, yeah man. Like, he's excited after like that he's shit. the best Fuck. skate like come on, he's He's, he's the most talented he's, skateboard, but he's, you definitely. can still see that hypeness. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. I mean, um, anybody that just is like pushing it like that, like they're just giving it every everything. ounce of everything they got, yeah. and they got a lot to give. Yeah. yeah. And when they got a lot to give, and you get to see it all, like just as a fan of skating, I get so hyped on that. I wanted yeah. to ask something. Go ahead. What's your thoughts on where the video part stands now in these days? <laughs> like, do you think it's mandatory that kids are having video parts or like, cause there's so many different ways you can kind of create a, a hype for yourself. Mm. I don't think it's mandatory, but I think there's only, there's only so much respect you can get without it. That's yeah. true. So I, think, I love I think, that answer. I think, I think you can become very popular. Yep. But yeah. That doesn't mean you have respect. Especially and I think peers. that, and I think that the best, respect from the peers and the critics and the fans yeah. and everybody. And I think that Nigel understood that. Yeah. And I think that, I think that have like, he never, for example, like his till death part that came out, he didn't need to do that. Right. He doesn't need, he's, he's killing it at street league. You know, he went and almost killed himself in the streets, you know, That's true. And, and he does. And, and after that, yeah, he's young and yeah, he's got lots to let left to give, but he doesn't have to. Yeah. He's already done enough in his his like short career that he could he could just roll with the convertible down sunset for the rest of his days. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's true. But, but he's still putting in work. Yeah, yeah, because he's got a fire inside him, and it doesn't matter what anybody else is saying or doing. And that Nike contract isn't why he gets out of bed in the morning and wants to go back tail in eighteen. Yeah, you know, true. it's because he wants to for himself. Right, and that shows, and it's clear. I like what you said though. It's it's me. It's respect, yeah. like getting oh, yeah, respect yeah. from your you know the peers and stuff like that. That makes that sense. means a lot. Yeah. At the end of the day, if I mean. What and that, not to say what are you doing this for but i mean fuck at the end of the day yes we do this for the love of skateboarding but dude i'd love being you know loved by my peers bro and like yeah. and that respect is is it's a great energy bro and it, it, you you yeah. almost seem like okay i'm i'm supposed to be doing this right. you know yeah and i think that it's a um it's um it's kind of like a graduation too mm -hmm. you graduate from being an instagram skater to a skater skater you know what i mean and yeah. that, that's yeah. That's a rank yeah. that not everybody gets. Mm -hmm. you know? and, um, and I think that the really gifted skateboarders, they're an Instagram skater. They're a contest skater. They're a video part skater. They're just, they're, they can jump on a vert ramp and back disaster, <laughs> do an air. You know what I mean? Like they'll do it all. Like you got someone like Jamie Foy that like, he he's, can do it all. He can do yeah. it all for sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or like Zion, for example, yeah. like he's a perfect example. Like he can do it all. Ooh, and, Ashad. And, and, Ashad. and that, and, and scapegoat for example. Yeah. 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 Andre, yeah. 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 Just people that, that, that understand all those different levels that they all make you who you are. And if you want to stay in cruise, stay on cruise control and just keep doing the Instagram thing, you can. Right. And like you said, Kelly, there's so many different ways to do it now. But mm -hmm. I mean, if you can mix the old school way and the new school way, and then also d dip a pinky toe into the contest every once in a while. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I love that. Yeah. And yes. that's so rad that Dylan, yeah. you know, going back to Dylan, Dylan Jabe, you know. Like he wants to film a video part, you know, I think that's like the 16 year old kid wants to like, that's, that's what it's all about. You I know? mean, he, he grew up watching these video parts, yeah, I know. you know, oh, and it's amazing. I think that he's already, he's already graduated in the Instagram world. So he's, he's at the top of his game. You're at 16, you're at the top of some game. Where is there to go from there? You got to explore the different disciplines, yes, yeah. you know? I mean, the other day he did, what it, was it on online, online contest skater? Oh so yeah. Cool. Yeah, I didn't see that. Well, because Skate Park Tampa is doing like a 
the global pandemic where they're doing like a Instagram kind of contest. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And he just that line was insane. It was insane. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a that's a funny topic, man, because Dylan, like, listen, 16 year old kid killing the game right now. So he's 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 talented. He's gifted at skateboarding, you know, and it's like, how do you when, like when do you turn him pro? Like, how do you go maneuver that situation? You know, mm-hmm. like, or do you give them a couple more years or do you wait for the shops to start asking for that? Or how do you like video part? Like he needs a video part, right? He needs a, I don't know. I just a couldn't even question or a real question that you're asking me. I'm, I'm kind of asking you in a way. Okay. I mean, I'm just using Dylan okay. as an example, you know, because he skates for zero and he's, he's gifted. Like, how do you go about think, that? Right. So I think that for me, it would probably be different than it would be for someone else. For me, I would like to see him check some boxes. There you, you go. Know? And mm-hmm. I think that I think that he's already got the Instagram box checked. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the guys do the interviews and make the video parts, but their Instagram is lacking. Mm -hmm. So they needed to like figure that out, you know, but he's the reverse, you know, he's been building an Instagram following since he's 12 years old in his carport in Hawaii. So, so he's got the Instagram (laughs) thing figured out. And so the next, the next obvious steps would be to get some Mac, some coverage in the only magazine that, you know, matters in our era, which is, you know, in this time period, which is Thrasher. Exactly. And that's not always easy, but get some coverage in Thrasher, Mm -hmm. film a full video part in the streets, a couple of them maybe. Sure. And, and see what he's into. And also if touring ever becomes a thing, it also is good to get out there and be seen and meet people. And then you see how they, how they interact with all those different, you know, steps. And as they check those boxes, they grow as a person, they grow in their experiences, they grow in their humility, and they become more ready to be pro in all those different ways. And I think that those all are like positive exercises that, in my opinion, a skateboarder should experience and should have to navigate in order to be considered a professional. I agree. Yeah, they can navigate contests they can navigate instagram they can navigate real life real life in person and interact with kids and not be a weirdo (laughs) you know and they can make video and they can make video parts yeah and if you can do all those things well and you do it for a couple of years in a row and everybody takes notice and everybody's on board then i think you just know when everyone feels it like let's start talking about this right right i'm glad you said the checking boxes thing because i think that you know i i mean we come from a different i think it's important it was a great it was a great breakdown yeah to the modern day yeah trying to go pro type of type of deal i think you broke it down very yeah. eloquently for sure i love that and i think you can do it like scapegoat where you just come up with some crazy way of doing it and it's real <laughs> yeah. fun to watch too yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely I, we, we people have been i mean i've been seeing him around for a while so it's cool to see his i've seen his story since he started the instagram thing skating in venice park but i'm very proud of him for like getting outside seeing him to travel around yeah yeah like so that's what's really cool to watch as well but yeah for sure he's just a talent that no one else has as well he's just yeah he's he is. He's, unreal. he's one in Definitely. a million. He's yeah. unreal. Yeah, we won't talk about it if he's regular goofy. Because yeah, that, that, that could be an all night, that. all night debate. I was just say you know. that, bro. That's definitely talented. He's neither. He's neither. He's he's, neither. Neither. he's, yeah. he's yeah. just a, he's a skateboarder. <laughs> remember, that, yeah. remember that one meme where it's like Paul Rodriguez is like, "Are you goofy or regular?" And it just says, "Yes, yes." Yeah. Like that, uh, that's him basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I do, I do like, I do like that he tr- pretends to be going backwards sometimes. So some of his tricks, he'll make them look fakey, yeah, and then he'll push, and then he'll push out of it and like forward. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. really like, interesting. What? And it's also and cool I, to see him do a one eighty because you know his shoulders always are open, no matter which way he lands. You're yeah. like, wait, it's supposed unless to- he doesn't want them open, he can also turn them backwards and go backwards either way. Yeah, yeah. yeah he can go you. backwards either way, and you you keep thinking like, wait, is he skating tranny now? Which way is he supposed yeah. to be going? <laughs> one of and, a um, kind. True. One of a yeah, kind. It's, man, it's it's radical. Yeah. It's like something I've never seen, and I, I really like it. Yeah, I, I kind of can't get enough special, of it. It's, it is kind of crazy. Um, here's a question. This is a, a popular topic on the Stop and Chat show. I want, let's talk about your board setup. Let's talk about Jamie Thomas's board <laughs> setup. What is your setup, and do you have any quirks or madness? Do you need anything a certain way? Like, let's break it down from, you know, what, what size board do you ride? Um, I ride an eight, six, an eight, Damn. six. Okay. Yeah. And I have uh, 151 thunders mm. and I ride 54 millimeter wheels just to make the board and the trucks not look huge. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, and then I ride Swiss 
I ride seven eighths Allen bolts. Okay. I hate Phillips bolts. Hate them. No Phillip bolts. No Phillips and no inch bolts. I don't want to pick my board up at any time and feel my finger get feel <laughs> yeah. hanging uh, over. I don't yeah. need a, I don't need extra bolt hanging out. I have no <laughs> idea why inch bolts became a thing. If you're not riding riser pads, inch bolts do not make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. I, so true. I, I agree. I, I 1,000. Agree. Yep. Yeah. You already know. When I went into a skate shop in the mid 2000s and they're like, I'm like, hey, can I get some bolts? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, you want, they're like, they hand me bolts. I'm like, those are one inch Phillips bolts. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like, and the guy's like, yeah, that's what we sell. And I'm like, you don't have seven eighths Allen's? He's like, no. What? He's like, first off, no one rides Allen bolts anymore. And I'm like, well, Whoa. F me. Wait a minute. How long ago was this? How long this ago? Is about, this is like 2010 or something. Okay. 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 Right. Gotcha. And then, and then he says to me, and no one rides, no one rides seven eights and no one rides, no one rides Allen's. And I'm like, what? Why not? Where am I at? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he just tell he tells me he's like I don't really know why not. I just know that if we get in seven eighths bolts, we won't sell one pack. Wow. If we get in selling seven eighths Allens, and I'm like, all right, you guys, I don't even know what happened here. <laughs> yeah, this is, you <laughs> well, stepped into they're another. All, they're all doing riser pads, but I doubt no, that. But, they, no, but where people, is this at? Where are we at? Where, I don't think. What skate shop is this? I know. Where were you? Hey, hey. So, so that's that's a good question. But then. Zero sells back in these days. Zero sold seven eighths Allen's bolts, seven eight Allen bolts. Yeah, and all the sales guys are like, you know, on the phone, like, hey, hey, we gotta make, we gotta make one inch Phillips bolts aren't cutting it anymore. And I'm like, all right, that's the second time I heard this. Who's making up this? <laughs> Who's? Who's making this up? And then I, and then I went, I called like three of my friends that run like really successful shops, whatever, Cowtown, whatever sure. plus. And I was like, hey, uh, what bolts sell? They're like only one inch. Phillips and I'm like, what wow. happened? I don't even remember. Like I, I've anyway, never been a one inch bolt guy. No. Yeah, why do you need extra bolt above the nut? I do not get it. Like, do you want to spend extra time doing this? That's I don't want to spend any extra time doing this, and mm. I don't want to get my knuckle cut. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with that. And this, this is before the silver tool, right? Before the the yeah, crank before tool. Before the silver. Yeah. Tool. Yeah. <laughs> before the silver tool. <laughs> is this a beginner skateboarder move? Like, are a lot of beginner beginner skateboarders coming in being like, "Oh yeah, I just want Phillips because that's no, what but I they know. don't even know that though. Know, they're but, beginner. But they usually they might think that Phillips is like the way to go because that's kind of they where don't, they don't know the world is. So Kelly, they don't know which way. I don't know. I hey man, I I don't think. That beginners are setting the trends. I don't nah, think you go off what they suggest. Change, change the trends. I don't know what happened. I'm just admitting to you my frustration. With the <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, 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 okay, I agree yeah. with that frustration. And and back in the day when this started becoming a thing, I went to like Billy. It was our production manager at the time, and I was like, Billy, I need you to order me a thousand seven eighths bolts and nuts. Phillips, I, I, Allen. Okay. I need I need to order a thousand. And he's like a thousand. I'm like, yeah, I want them in the. I want to. I want to buy them. I'm gonna put them in the team room, and I want like a ten year supply of okay. seven eighths Allen bolts. <laughs> okay. And he's like, no problem, man. All right, boss. Like whatever, you know. Like, and I we just had we had the biggest <laughs> like, biggest drawer of Allen seven eighths Allen bolts, and I felt rich. I was like, never again. Yeah. <laughs> I go on tour. I go on tour. I just scoop my hand in there and like just put them in a Ziploc. I'm yeah. rich. I'm ready. <laughs> that is so funny. Anyway. I don't even. I never even Donald, heard anyway. of something like that. What is it like, Donald Duck? Or who is it, Scrooge? When he jumps? Oh, you the jump in the hole. Yeah, yeah. Jumped in the old yeah. like seven eight bolts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got it. <laughs> I'm Scrooge too. Yeah, I'm Scrooge about the whole thing. I'm mad, man. I'm mad when they told me I can't get seven eight bolts. I'm mad. Got him. <laughs> so, so let me go through it. Eight eight six one fifty one yeah. thunders. Um, 54 millimeter wheels. I ride the Spitz Formula Fours, and then Zero. We're making wheels again, so I've been riding those sometimes, okay. testing out different different durometers and stuff. And then I ride Swiss bearings, mm -hmm. um, whatever grip. But I have to I have to decorate the grip. I can't run plain black grip anymore. What kind of decorations and, are we talking about? Like painting on them or, or cutting the grip? All sorts all sorts of stuff. I got to do something different. I got to put about a half an hour in, or I feel like I rob myself. Or I'm not <laughs> okay. dedicating. I'm not dedicating, I'm not, I'm not giving that skateboard the love that it deserves. But wait a minute, old Jamie, is he cutting up his grip tape and doing no, stuff? No, he wrote plain black grip. I was going to, I was going to say, <laughs> I don't remember. He was boring. He was bo <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, but so here, here's what it is. Here's, God, what, it, here's what happened. 
when I was a kid, I did an elaborate grip job on every board. And, that, and, and there was a time where I felt like I was falling out of love with skateboarding a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I was looking for something to stoke me out. And I was like asking myself, okay, what did I do when I was a kid that I'm not doing now? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I used to write on my shoes. I used to write on my grip. I used to put time into my grip. Each skateboard was special. And I was like, okay, I've lost that. I'm just like, skateboards are a commodity. I got plenty of them. I don't need, it's no longer special. How do I make skateboarding and my skateboard itself special again? Right. And I started decorating the grip. And then I was like, I loved that grip job and I love that skateboard. And I kind of reconnected with that kid in me that had the like new Nautis with the dope grip. And you were just like, I was like, man, this, it cannot get any better than this. I got a red Nautis and this grip is sick. And it says like Doritos on it or something. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'm, all, sure. I'm all stoked on it. And I'm like, um, I'm, I, if I, I say Doritos, one of my friends wrote on his grip Doritos and he spelt it wrong. And it said Dorse toes. Dorse toes. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> That's the worst anyway. when you write something and it's uh, on your grip tape yeah. and you spell it but wrong. But anyway, I started decorating my I started decorating my grip tape, painting it, cutting lines, making mm. cool ideas. And um and I also I realized that life had gotten so busy that I didn't really have time to be really creative where I'm like mm. going to slow down, slow down and just decorate something. It's yeah. kind of like you ever, you ever like, you know, when you go to a, I don't know if you guys ever experienced this, but I have it all the time. If you go to like a, you know, a um, gingerbread house uh, party or something, or your, your, your wife does like, you know, um, or your, you know, your spouse does like a, uh, what's it called? Jack-o'-lantern carving, okay, you know, and yeah. you get, you find yourself getting really into it and you're like, man, I don't, I don't, I'm not nurturing this side of myself often enough. Um, creative so, yeah like yeah like yeah. arts and, and crafts almost yeah arts and crafts yeah. and i feel like the feeling of arts and crafts connects you with a different side of yourself that with computers and instagram you're not really able to you're not able to feel and experience and uh, there's something cool about it and the same reason kids like it and the mm. same reason it makes them feel like they made something and they created something and they have something to show for it put it up on the fridge. I started, yeah, I started getting in touch with that and I started having fun with it. And then, so every board, um, yeah, I put like at least 30 minutes into the grip. Okay. Like creative juices are flowing. Now, when we're talking about creative, are are you, you're cutting the grip? You're, are you putting any like stickers underneath it? Are we doing any weird designs or are we talking about drawing, drawing on it too? Really? Yeah. All of it. So yeah, sometimes, Sometimes I'm talking mixed media where you're doing like, (laughs) you're doing, you're cutting the grip, you're doing the stickers. I'm I'm drawing on it as well. Sometimes it's just cuts. Okay. Sometimes I paint the board a crazy color underneath the cuts. So you have this like contrast coming through. Like if the top of the board is blue, I'll put fluorescent green like zigzags on it. And then you got blue and green coming through the cuts, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I, um, I hung around with Foss, you know, Foss, the dude who runs heroin. Uh Yeah. He has the coolest grip tape jobs. And, um, when I was doing my battle commander, I was hanging around him and I was like staying at his house a little bit when I was filming, staying up in LA. And I just got really into it a couple of nights. We just stayed up all night making grip or, you know, he was doing what he was doing and I was doing grip jobs. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was so hyped on it, man. And I, I just was like, I got to do this more. And when I went, when I went back home after the barracks thing, I just started doing it and I've been doing it. What is that? Five years. I was going to say, yeah. Something like that. Huh? Seven, eight years. That was 2012. Eight years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny how we kind of can switch because like, listen, black grip tape. That's, I can't have anything on my grip tape, you know, back in that, (laughs) you know, like seriously. You would hate my setup. But no, but now I feel like I probably could. Right. right? Not, not, not me skating, you know, doing, filming for hot chocolate tour and then trans world. You know what I mean? Like I could, there, there's no way (laughs) I could have anything on my grip tape. No way. And I, I take I it so. that you were kind of the same. Back yeah. then you probably couldn't have anything. I, you needed just I was. And and you know what? You know what? There's two things that happened. That barracks project that I did, um, the battle commander, I wrote all these different boards. Mm. I went from 147 trucks to 151s. Oh, wow. On all those different setups. I was riding like boards like this wide, yeah. and I was riding I was riding a Hasoy 10 and a half inch board. Jeez. Jeez. And I, um, 
I had so much fun messing with myself and having to get used to the board that I was like, this is way more fun than just writing the same exact thing for like 10 years. True. Yeah, true. And so the board that felt the most comfortable was a bigger board. And I realized that the 151s, the way they turned and the way they felt when I grinded rails and stuff mm -hmm. felt just so comfortable and solid that after the, like when I went into the battle commander, I think I was riding like eight or eight and a quarter. Okay. And then when I left, I was riding eight, five or bigger with big trucks. And that felt like normal. And then for the next few years, I went eight, four, eight, five, eight, six. And then I, for almost a year, I rode nine, five cruiser boards, Ooh. which is crazy. Big but bugs. the concave is really mellow and zero makes these boards, but the concave was really mellow. So it's really light on the tail and it doesn't feel heavy. Ooh. And then it's really mellow in the rails. So you can flip, you can do all the regular flip tricks. It just like nollie flips are hard because the nose was only about six inches or mm. five and a half. Hmm. And then crooked grinds on ledges felt weird because the nose is tapered and you don't have anything to push on and your foot kind of hits. Yeah. So like certain tricks sucked, but everything else was fine. And Dylan actually skated one. We did this Instagram edit for this like pink cruiser board about a year or two ago. And we mm. spoofed the, um, we spoofed the yeah, right board toss. Oh yeah. I remember, yeah. <laughs> and we used the same song and everything. Mm -hmm. We just did like a little Instagram commercial for the board. But anyway, after the commercial, Dylan skates that board and he crushes the park. He did like all the tricks he did pretty much in his, in his contest line oh on that, on that 9.5. Anyway, my point is, is that I realized that having fun with shapes and sizes and mixing things up mm -hmm. keeps it interesting. And, yeah. and for me, I'd been skating so long and yeah. I was kind of bored and I didn't really know what to do. And, um, so mixing the board shapes up and oh. making crazy grip kind of made it a little more interesting for me. Made it fun. And, oh, yeah, yeah totally. it made it fun. Yeah, yeah I can so see So anyway, that. that's that's a long, that's probably 45 minutes dedicated to my skateboard. No, I that's, like, yeah, that's <laughs> awesome, dude. It's the passion right but, there, yeah, dude. Let me, uh, let me ask you this, though. Back, you know, old Jamie, I, I keep old Jamie, whatever, you know, dying to live <laughs> the, and all there, that. You know, I'm 45, it's all old Jamie now. Okay. <laughs> 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 but back then when you're filming for these videos and you're doing all these, you know, crazy rails and just, you know, you're destroying it. Did you need to have your setup a certain way or were you just kind of freestyling it? Did you really need to have, were you meticulous in what you were writing? I don't think I was as meticulous as others. I mean, I know, you know, I was never good enough. And when I say that, I say that with, um, I'll explain, but I don't think I was ever so good that I could tell the minute differences between every little thing. Mm -hmm. You know that some people, they're so good, like Cole is one of them, yeah. Chris Weimer is one of them. They, they can break things down to knowing like that something is the tiniest bit off. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I, I didn't have that level of board control in order to be able to send my brain messages that like this isn't working. Mm. Right. But I did that said, I do like a mellower concave. I never was a steep concave guy okay. because my kickflips rocketed on, on, on steep the boards steep. and I never could get used to it and I couldn't make it happen. And I was like, I don't know how people ride steep boards and have a buttery kickflip. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just found whatever, whatever concave and I, I, I concave is probably the most important okay. and I'd, I'd rather ride flatter than steeper. Oh, gotcha. And okay. Anyway. I, I, I wasn't that hung up on meticulous stuff, but I did like what I liked. And I had the luxury of owning a skateboard brand. And at, for a while I owned a, a wood shop and I was able to make whatever I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I say that I wasn't meticulous, but I had the resources to be meticulous. So I was because I had the resources. Right? <laughs> sure. If that makes sense. No, no, yeah, totally. Totally. It's interesting because I mean, it's, it's, it's such a broad spectrum of people on so many different levels who are meticulous and non-meticulous, you know, it, 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 it's, I think I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't think I'm middle. like, I'm not no brains, no headache. I can ride whatever you give me. Okay. But I'm also not like a savant where I can tell if something's an eighth of it and the tail's an eighth of an inch higher sure. than my last board. Right. You can tell by the way people skate that they're meticulous or not almost. Oh yeah. I mean, you see Chris Weimer's kickflip exactly. and you're like, okay, he has to depend on that thing being right every time. Right. There's got to be a lot of things that add up to make that thing perfect. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
just the way he flicks into something you're like that he just knows how that works every single yeah, time that, yeah that's a button there's like a yeah. there's a mechanical a thing that's happening yeah. that doesn't happen for me like every kickflip i do is different some are cool some feel like crap but <laughs> his are exactly the same everyone's identical yeah it's well, kind of like a modern day rodney mullen because that's how rodney was he's very meticulous on yeah. boards mm -hmm. and how his shit was set up and yeah yeah that's the closest thing i remember seeing growing up in a sense of seeing someone really th care about how their board is feeling you know i mean don't get me wrong like i cared about how my board was feeling but like but back like back then you're not really oh, you're, no. you're grabbing a board you're setting yeah, it up and you're skating. let's go yeah yeah right i think it's a there's a certain level of understanding that a person can have to where they can break anything down into much smaller parts than everyone else mm -hmm. and i think that rodney mullen is the epitome of that in skateboard <laughs> definitely see i would he can break that. it Damn. He can break it down into the smallest parts, mm -hmm. everything, yeah. the trick, the foot positioning. And, you know, and Cole has a bit of that. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. bit savant, you know, sure. it's a bit like you have this extreme heightened awareness about the minutia of, mm -hmm. every, of, of skateboarding. And while the rest of us are like sitting there with our thumbs up our butt. Right. <laughs> he, bro he broke it down pretty dope last time when he was here. I mean, I was he, definitely impressed oh, yeah. by how he, yeah, his thought process on Cole how that works. Cole is yeah. very, yeah. I, I think if I had that kind of mentality and meticulous, I think I would, I, it would drive me crazy. It would drive me crazy. I don't think I could like, it was deal funny with that when he starts yeah. talking about like where his head was over the board yeah, i was bro. like i've never thought of that no. where my head rests. yeah when he teaches you a trick he talks about your foot placement your shoulders and your head and <laughs> no. and then and then if you're open or if you're turned mm -hmm. and he has an ability cole has an ability to convey the most important aspects of a trick so if you're going to go and try it you have the most important elements in place and you got a way better chance of success even if you don't even know what you're doing <laughs> yeah. based on the fact that Seriously. he's given you the best tips that have ever been given has he taught you anything like trick wise uh, that you were like you could never do but then he just told you like some little trick little and secret you, yeah front front side crooked grinds oh. well him him and rodney Tough him and rodney trick. both told me different at different times but it was ride parallel <laughs> foots in backside heel flip position Ollie in the front crook and put your head over your foot. And I was like, the head over my foot, I never understood. But once I put the head over the foot, it just went and I <laughs> wow. stayed locked in. I love it. And I was like, I, and I was always like poking it out in front of me yeah. and that just had it always running away from me. Mm -hmm. And, and then, then if I went at an angle, I just did a crooked nose grind. Right. And I couldn't pinch it. And it's, it was like, okay, parallel, heels, toes hanging over. Foot on and the and the foot on the back corner I didn't learn until Aunt Travis watching Aunt Travis do a million front crooks. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, he's the front crook master. I'm just gonna roll next to him and just like gawk at his feet a hundred <laughs> times. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. did that. So I took what Cole told me, and then I saw what I saw with Aunt Travis. And then I went back and watched Rodney day one, one and two. And mm. I was like, oh, Rodney's doing that the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. I basically got the ingredients, but I was just too too prideful to accept that, I don't know, I got to learn this by watching other people. You know? <laughs> right. yeah. The foot, anyway, the foot it, in it, back heel position. Wow. That's a, I don't think I could, that's a weird one for me. Right. I, I can see that. I, I, I can a weird see one for that, me. but I, I don't, what, what does the back foot do? What, what did you notice with the back foot? The back foot crosses it in the front crook effortlessly. It, it gives it a 90 degree right in so instead do you, of you, does that mean you, the the foot i'm sorry to interrupt you but is it in the back right or the back left so just like you would do a back heel i'm regular footed mm -hmm. so my foot would be in heel flip position front mm -hmm. toes are hanging off back foot is in the is in the opposite corner of the toes and then when you go it just is naturally going to front crook mm -hmm. the board's going into the right position so you have less work all you have to do is find the aiming spot closest to your right wheel and put your head over it and it's pinched and you're going down the line Bro. i love it dude yeah. i seriously want to go try one right now i swear because i could do them but like kelly just got the breakdown no, but I, could, I, I could do it but there were days where it felt right and days where you kind of lose it and you're mm -hmm. like it doesn't feel the same you know yeah and yeah. i think yeah i think that the ma most important factor is the head over the foot and cole told me that and when i did it i was like oh this works all you got to do is get into one and it be waxed and you're going down the ledge like it you works every time and your foot can be in the center of the tail or the corner of the tail it mm -hmm. okay it's really up to you because some people's feet flap when they put it in the corner yeah but 
I found that if I put it just before the corner, not totally back heel, but right before it, you can still get a solid pop. Your foot is in a stable position of like an inch below the bolts and you're getting that like full crossed up and it's just going right in. And when you lean your head over, it just crunch. And then you're just going, yeah, you lean your head I, over, bro. That is so Listen, sad. you should charge money for this. bro. This is valuable information. This is valuable. I got, I, this is secondhand information. I know, but listen, it works advice. now. You I'm just walking it? around with Cole with a pad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I would. Well, he has that stomp sessions thing. This is true. And that, yeah. that man, I'm telling you, though, because like trick tips, they, they don't sometimes they just don't go in depth with all this stuff. And there are these little secrets. True. Little see head yeah. over the foot. Never thought of that. No. Now but I'm hey, going to do that. I'm going to try to try to use that. You, you know, what's funny, though, is that like and Travis is so good at the front crooks. He's he's always like, yeah, watch me do a regular crooked grind, dude. I don't even know what I'm doing. Yeah. That's the funny part. You see him try to do this, the regular I mean, backside crook. It's but some people. It's have just. It? Yeah. It's just how many reps you put in. Totally. You've seen you how got. many front crooks he's done. Like his, his his Instagram in like 2012 or 13 was like front crook Benny Hanna, front crook <laughs> shove over the other side. Like yeah. it, he could front crook the uh, the whole barracks flat bar and take his feet off and do all sorts I of stuff. It, like man. he put a million tries into the front crook. I mean, he's the master. He in is. my opinion, the master, like Jamie Foy, obviously. Jamie he's Foy. Amazing. Yeah, he's but, definitely. but Aunt Travis, I've seen him do so many and it was just like, He's so good at them. It's one of my favorite looking tricks. If I see a good front trick, uh, front crook, I'm like, oh my God, that look. even a crooked grind. If somebody locks into a nice crooked grind and just grinds and yeah. just stays on there, those two tricks, man, whoo, beautiful, beautiful. Sure. love Definitely. it. Well, let's talk about the leap of faith, man. What's going on with that? <laughs> What's going on with that? Wow. You like that transition? What? It was good. Whoa, what's there to talk about? I don't know, but uh, it's it's one of the it's one of the most iconic Jamie Thomas thing. You didn't. Does that mean you're out of questions? No, no. Did no, we talk no, about no. that on his on his episode? I think we touched on it a little bit. I think we touched we on did. it. A little we did. No, we didn't touch on it. It was the last thing you brought the interview back to life for it. Well, listen. How can I not bring it up? It's the leap Doing of it faith, again. you know. I'm just like, no. But I, I recently watched something because I, you know, we were you were gonna come on the show. And I, I watched this thing, and when you were talking about the leap of faith, and I thought it was interesting that you were saying that that was the transition from toy machine over to zero, and you were saying that that trick obviously wasn't gonna be the cover because you didn't make it. And so how how did you get that? You know leap of faith you're taking this leap of faith from toy machine over to your it's like it's poetic you know what i mean like i thought that was, was that very the, interesting was that the 15 things you don't know about zero no it was something YouTube? where you, you you were uh it was an interview oh okay i don't know what it was but it was just uh it was just an interview of you talking about the leap of faith hmm. is there something else i should have watched <laughs> no uh, some friends of mine in canada this guy levi did a did a um a youtube episode for they, their skate shop they do 15 things you didn't know about x like 15 oh, okay. things you didn't know about baker 15 things you didn't know about this guy or that guy mm -hmm. anyway he you can tell where he got all his information he called me and, and interviewed me and i told him questions that he asked and oh, some okay. a lot of it's a lot of it's right and there um but anyway i think we talk about it on there but yeah that that was the the, the scenario i don't i don't know what i have to add to it but yeah that was it it was it was more it was like a I don't know, a fur, a, a, an old school meme where you have a, <laughs> a, pun, a pun in your ad and no one acknowledged that it was a leap of faith leaving Toy Machine. I don't know why, maybe because they were distracted by the guy hucking himself off the okay. second story. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah, um, sure. But, but it turned into everyone called the gap that. But Adrian Lopez came up with that. Yeah. We were like midnight midnight at Tomiato back in the day and we were working on an ad and I was like, Hey, what do you, what do you think we should put? What do you think we should call this gap or, you know, what, what should we, whatever, put in this ad. And he just like yelled it out, leap of faith. And Perfect. Like, Whoa, Amazing. that's cool. Did you I ever want to go back and try it again? Or was yeah, that Yeah, there was a, there was a time around from like 98 to 2001 where I like had it on my list of mm. like, okay, when my part gets this much done, I'm going to go try it again. Right. And, um, and then in 99, I blew my, well, 90, 90, early 99, I broke my wrist 
And then late 99, I blew my knee out. Jeez. And then 2000, I had another knee injury and had another surgery. Ugh. And then 2001, I had another ACL surgery. So I had three years, three knee surgeries in a row. Fuck. And yeah. it just started to become like, that's not worth it. It's like I want to film a video. I want to film like in the middle of dying to live. It was like, that would have been the time mm. I was young enough, but I'd had three knee surgeries and I was like, I just want to skate for a while. I don't want to go back and like have, you know, now that I have this weakness and it's in my mind, I had three knee surgeries on the same knee in three years. Wow. And so I was like, I was like, you know, I want to do this, but I also just want to enjoy being able to skate again. Cause this has been a really tough couple of years. Yeah. And you know, there was times in there where, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with my knee and it was swelling up and I'd already had surgery and it took like a year to heal from the surgery in between the two ACLs. And I was, I was shook, man. That's it was a, tough. It that's was, a I, mental I, battle. Fuck. Yeah. It was, it was the toughest one, the toughest thing that I'd experienced in my skate career. Hmm. Um, and then I got over the hump though. And we finished dying to live in 2002 and then I just, the kind of desire for that, like business was picking up and falling had started and I don't know, I just didn't have that same beef with it, you know, like I did when I was younger. It almost is like... It's almost better you didn't Better like you did <laughs> Yeah, it's almost like... It, I mean... Seriously. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> yeah. No, no but, but, it, it's, but it's, your almost, body. It's, it's an iconic, though. It's, it's the most like, iconic trick that... Wa wasn't you know, landed. That wasn't landed. I know it sounds weird, yeah. but it's still incredible like it's iconic for sure and did we talk about the the reason why you think you didn't land it was the speed you thought you thought if you were faster you could you could have pulled it what's the yeah funny, i was going, was to <laughs> oh, you were I'm going just, to slow uh, i'm laughing because we're talking about the leap of faith of all things and <laughs> I, I feel like i've talked about this to death but i'm down I'm it's down. fun i mean dude it's it's um, it's great i love it um i'm not trying to be a snob either i'm just i just you know, I'm, I'm hanging in there. Okay. <laughs> Thank, thanks for bearing with us. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Nobody was um, the speed, right? It was. A speed. Yes. I, I, you know, when you jump off really high stuff, the faster you go, the more dangerous it is because the more inertia that you create Sure. and the more force you create and the scarier it is. Mm -hmm. So I went a comfortable speed to know I would land on the board and not kick it out because I didn't know what had happened. I'd never jumped off anything higher than a vert ramp. Okay. Um, which a vert ramp is like 12 and a half around that time. Mm -hmm. And I jumped off vert ramps at demos and made ollies off vert ramps. Mm. So I knew I could do 12 and a half feet, but it's a pretty big jump. I don't know what it is, 16 or 18 at my highest point, sure. whatever that is, it was a three or four foot jump higher than anything I'd ever jumped off of. So I didn't really know what speed to go. I just knew that I wanted to be comfortable enough to land on it and not bail. Right. And when you get into the really big gaps, like the bigger gaps in my career, everything is about landing on it. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. all 100% of your emphasis is about not kicking out because when you land on the board, whether you pack and roll forward or the board shoots out, either way, the momentum is getting dispersed. Yeah. When you mm -hmm. kick out and you land on all your feet and you land mm -hmm. on your feet, you're going into a role, no matter if you like it or not, mm -hmm. but the impact that your body absorbs and your feet absorb is way greater than if you land on the wheels and the board shoots out or the board goes behind you and you turn, go into a role. Sure. Um, so, you know, anybody that skates big gaps will tell you landing on it is the most important thing, yeah. especially if all you're doing is an ollie. You got no excuse. Sure. All you do is hit your tail like you've done a million times and not, not, not bail, yeah. you know? Right. But you have to have a serious, like, self-talk session with yourself <laughs> that says no matter what i am not kicking out i am not kicking out no matter what and you have to convince every ounce of your being that you're not going to kick out you know like if some guy's going to go jump el toro oh god for example you know Jeez. yeah like don the nuge back in the day you know you got to just be like i'm not going to kick out sure no matter what if i land on the stairs that's better than <laughs> that's kicking better out. than kicking out yeah. wow man so anyway, that, that's the only thing I can say is, yeah. is that, that that was the goal, land on the board. I went the speed that I thought I could land on the board without kicking out or getting freaked out. And if you watch the footage in slow motion, the board hits the ground just before my feet and my board comes off my feet. The oh, board no. hits, the board hits and slows down. My body keeps going forward. So it took my back foot from the bolts and put it right in the middle of the board. And my front foot goes on the nose. I stomped the board out. 
Okay. And then because my foot's on the nose, my ankle was like at a little bit of an incline, kind of sprained my ankle. Mm. And then I pile drive my hip because I'm jumping off of something way higher than I should be. <laughs> and I get up and I limp away and I'm like, oh, I'm done, man. No right. more of that today. Wow. You know? I mean, just uh, to try that, Jamie. Heavy, bro. Yeah, heavy. Just to try that is insane, <laughs> bro. Psycho. Like, wow. 20, it's one of those days. 23 years ago. Like, Crazy. I'm feeling good today. Like, let me try. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you just jump off this two-story building. Hey, one more thing I wanted to ask you, though. Not one more. We have a lot of things to talk about. But, um... <laughs> Are, what what are we can we look forward to another Jamie Thomas part? What's going on, bro? You know, I don't I don't know if anybody's really looking forward to that. I mean, maybe people are, but what? But I'm well, looking I put forward a part to out, it. I put a part out in January, and it seemed like it. I could people could take it or leave it, you know. And maybe it's because. It came and went, but I did a damn it all full part yeah. in the damn it all video. It yeah. came. It dropped on New Year's Day, and to be honest, like if I have a good day skating at the skate park and put 10 tricks together, people are more excited to see it because it's in a place where they can easily digest it. They all take the time to watch it because it's only 30 seconds. Right. And they're fine with that. And to be honest, my priorities have changed in my life. And mm. I don't know if I have the, the reason to put out another part that's not to say that that won't change, but right, right, right now right. I would much rather be hanging with my family and going skating with my son, my kids. And even if they're at the skate park and they're skating with their buddies and I'm like filming a couple of tricks down the stairs mm -hmm. or filming some flat ground, I'm still kind of experiencing something with them and we're driving mm -hmm. back and you know, I don't know, man, I, I got no beef with skating anymore. I just <laughs> like, I, I'm like, I'm here to like, enjoy it i love it right and i love doing it i love doing it with people i love skating a skate park i love having the good time i like still skating enough to be good at it mm -hmm. to where i don't feel like i suck you know because that's a really lame feeling like i didn't skate for i didn't skate much in 2019 and when i started skating again and then i tried to i went from barely skating at all and then i heard that the uci hubba was d knob <laughs> and i went and tr I went and tried to barley grind it after not skating for, oh, I don't even know how long. What happened? I blew my heel out in two tries. Oh my gosh. And then I took three months off. And oh when God. I went back to skating, I was like, I feel like I got two left feet. I actually posted an Instagram post and it said, I feel like I got two left feet. Anyway, I, I, I had a really tough session, but then I was like, oh, I like this. Yeah. I haven't done this in a while and I like it. It's fun. And I'm going to do this more. And I just... So that damn it all part that I did only had one trick filmed in 2019. I didn't, I only filmed one trick in the whole year leading up to the video. I spent the whole year not getting in the van with the team and kind of disconnecting a little bit because I really was neglecting some areas of my life mm. that were too big of a priority to neglect. And I had been very juvenile and very attached to the identity of being a pro skateboarder and, and the accolades that come with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I took a year to just like detach myself from that identity being my number one identity on, on, on earth. That's, mm. that's good though. It you was know? amazing. Yeah. It was so good. And so now I'm a guy I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a child of God that also skateboards. Right. And so That's rad. now it's a little bit more in perspective and I enjoy skateboarding much more because, you know, I, I agreed to do a few uh, social posts for some of my sponsors a month. But aside from that, I'm just here to enjoy this like amazing thing that I'm still doing since I was a kid yeah. where I go and ride this like piece of wood around with a bunch of other people that like it as much as I do. Yeah. And, um, and we just get to high five and get stoked on it. That's the coolest thing. And that's what it's all about, Beautiful. man. You know, I, I'm almost, I mean, I, I've been at that point in my life and career, so to speak, you know, it's, uh, I just want to go have fun with my friends. You know what I mean? Like, cool. If we yeah. break out the camera, if we break out little Instagram, iPhone, cool, whatever, but it's not a priority of mine. You know, I just want to go out there be in the sun, be in the open air and just have fun, you know, and just enjoy the company, enjoy the uh, getting stoked on people doing tricks and all that stuff. You know, I don't want to be bogged down with all that. stuff. And J Jamie, you've been, you know, listen, you don't, you have nothing to prove, bro. You've done it all. Yes. You've yeah. done it all. 
Definitely. Damn it all, you've oh. done it all. <laughs> uh, Th- thank you. I, I don't feel like I have anything to prove, but sometimes I feel like I have something to give. And if that comes back and I want to get back out there, then I'll do it. Yes. Yeah. But I'll do it in a different manner. I'll do it in a way that works for my family and that right. is not very selfish and self-absorbed. And, you know, all my video parts in the past were all self-absorbed, torturous, just things that I just felt obsessed about, you know, I'm really trying to let my obsessions not lead me not, not, you know, kind of like dictate what I'm doing. And Mm. I'm trying to find that balance, you know, that balance between what I like to do and what I should be doing and what, what is needed of me. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that's what growing up is, you know, and I, I just, because my career was successful and because Mm -hmm. the business was doing well, it, it, it elongated or like, kind of perpetuated that, that, that mentality that I had about video parts and about skateboarding being like who I am and that I need to be like this thing right. or that I need to, you know, I don't know, man. I, no, I, I, under, I get it. But I yeah. think what you're talking about too, it takes a lot of time. Like you said that like you took a year off, you know, um, all that stuff that you're talking about doesn't happen overnight either, you know, like working on yourself and and Mm -hmm. figuring it out and, and, and letting go. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a work in progress, you know, definitely. And I think we could all use that. Yeah. It's, it's practicing balance and patience and, you know, compassion and empathy for yourself as well as the people that you care about, Yeah, man. you know, and showing up for them and showing up for yourself. And I don't think that me doing a video part is showing up for myself. I just think that's me trying to do the same old thing and try and, you know, work on this identity of this old, you know, old skateboarder. And Mm -hmm. I just, I don't, I don't really want that anymore. Sometimes I want to skate. Sometimes I don't. And, you know, I feel like, I like to have that option, you know, to to either skate or not skate. And I I don't know. I think that if I ever get a crazy idea or I ever hear a song, that's just too good to pass. There you go. (laughs) There you go. So it's not off the table. It's not off the table. table. And I think if, you know, I I dream about being a 50 year old skateboarder that can still like put out a part. Like how cool would that be to do a street part at 50? You know, it's like, easy. Fuck yeah. You know, I'm that's 45 reality, and I That's feel reality. good. Yeah. It, it's reality. Yeah. yeah. I mean, an, the boss is going to do it. Andrew, yeah, he's in great dude. shape. Go. Tony Hawk is going, you know, he's going crazy. Yeah. Right I now. mean, yeah, Tony's, Tony's a whole other, yeah. whole other animal. Know, I know. I mean, people but, literally did this. You've done it all. So they just want to see you have fun, dude. That's it. Like when you have fun, everyone watching you has seen the whole story of you skating. Like that's what makes them feel good. Man. I think you're right, Kelly. And that's what all I want to do is have fun. So it's a match made in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> That's the essence of why we started, man. The shit was fun. It was you know? fun. Yeah. yeah, sometimes you get lost in like you're trying to build some business. I mean, I trip out on you, Jamie, because you were saying I earlier, got lost for a couple of decades. Yeah, I mean, dude, <laughs> you were being a pro skateboarder and running a business, and you were like, "Oh yeah, at the height of my career and business." I'm like, "What skateboarders really have that to say?" Like. Uh, running a business and building it that big and being a pro skateboarder. No, he was so in the trenches. Much, Sometimes yeah, it, that definitely. building a business takes away from your skating and yeah. then you start to taper off. But he was doing it all at the same time. I think the only reason that was possible is because I'd established a work ethic with my skating that all I had to do was just go through the motions and something decent would come out of it. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then I also had a work ethic in business and my career was doing well. And I was, the business was kind of riding in the beginning was riding off the coattails of my career. Mm -hmm. Um, so they were kind of like, they were like helping each other. And then things like Cole and the other brands and the other team riders that were stepping up started growing into the momentum. And then I became not as important. I didn't have to have last part. I could just be in the video and it was cool. Yeah. You know? And, um, And we, you know, we're, that am part, that am video. I'm hoping to have a few tricks in that, and yeah. you know, yeah. I just think now just a couple of tricks in every project that we do is would be great. Like Dane, Dane's got a part coming out next week, and Sick. I have oh. a trick in it. It's not nice. like a dope trick. His part's gnarly, really <laughs> gnarly. <laughs> He's and a gnarly kept, dude. Yeah. He is. And I kept talking. I was like, dude, this trick ain't holding up in your part. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't care. I want it in there. And I'm, it, and it's the first trick I filmed in probably a year, but it's just like. It's just a trick on a, like a gap to gap to guardrail or something. It's not Amazing. even that cool, but 
He's like, I want it in there. And I'm like, all right, man. Yes. Sure, people are going to love it, dude. You're your own worst critic at the end yeah, of the day. True. dude. Everyone's going to love it, bro. And that's all. Yeah, but this part, to... this part is like, <laughs> I mean, he's on one, man. I love that he's, you know, he's trucking into his 30s and he's he's putting it down. This might be my favorite part he's ever had. Wow. wow. When yeah. is this coming out? I can't tell you the exact no. time. That's spoiler surprise. It's coming soon. Though. Okay. Okay. It's go. all VX or is it HD? Uh, zero is VX until there's no more cameras and there's no more tape. Damn. <laughs> okay. So do, you're not going to do, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do an HD zero video. Not until there's no more cameras and no more tapes. But you own, I heard, I heard you have a whole collection of, v, of VX. We, we do, but the lenses are gone now. When you scratch and break the lenses, like the lenses are selling for two or three grand. Wow. Are you serious? Yeah. You're becoming ancient the, the here. The Century stopped making them. They stopped making those and the, and the big fisheye for the HPX. Oh, that's okay. They done moved yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're like, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not enough of you to keep us doing yeah. this. Yeah, you guys are on your own. You're on your yeah. own. Wow, yeah. man. Okay, I respect that. I respect that. I just would think that I, uh, you know, HD. You know, Baker. You know, you never think you would see a Baker video in HD. Here they come, Baker Four HD. It was great. You know, you get to see everything. It was amazing. To see everything. <laughs> I well, you see know, it, <laughs> you know, what I, mean. I am. I I feel you, and I I like that the Baker video was HD. Mm -hmm. I think that. I don't know. I think there's just certain brands that people want to see VX and yeah. I know it's crappy quality. The cool thing about VX though is we can film stuff on iPhones and it makes it in the video. There you when go. You, it's true. When you, when you lower the standard that <laughs> low, you can put in iPhone footage and it looks buttery. That's you got to crap it up true. a little bit. That's well, true. If there's a good that. filmer that can film with the VX good, I love seeing that. But when it's like not right and we've but, seen examples of it not yeah. right yeah when the know. colors are all off you're like oh god that looks disgusting but mm -hmm. when it looks good it looks good it's well, fun to watch this nostalgia yeah. you know we grew up totally. on this shit totally yeah we're we're kind of playing that nostalgia card still zero is just no, i really. feel like that's what you expect when you see a zero video yeah. and i don't want to take that away from people prematurely right yeah. right and gosh and it makes it so hard nowadays too with music rights and all that stuff man because there's epic music out there that probably just cost a fortune rasher's pretty good at it though they're pretty good they, at like yeah. getting rights to to like pretty good songs and depending on your budget you know and if you got a really dope part that the guy went in on it it might be worth figuring That's out a true. way to you know, fork up the money to make it happen. I think yeah. that mm -hmm. we're moving into a time where skateboarding is doing well based on all these crazy circumstances. And, um, you know, it makes more sense now to invest a little more money. And, right. and the cool thing is, is that Thrasher's doing so well. And so many people watch their YouTube videos that, oh, yeah. you know, they cover the music if it's within reason. And then you got to meet them in the middle if it's expensive. And, you know, it works. Right. Um, yeah. You know, and I'll say back to the HD question. Mm -hmm. um, Anything that our guys do, I've instructed or I've asked Vinny, who, uh, Vin Dog, who's our filmer, I've asked him that anything that's super gnarly, like tricks that should be, that, that could be in a documentary or could be in a My War or could be in something, film those HD and mm -hmm. then we'll, we'll, put a, we'll put a little grain on it to yeah, make it yeah. match the VX. <laughs> right. But if the tricks are that gnarly, they should be filmed on something that can be used for the next five to 10 years, you know, not... Not like it's going to look like it was filmed in the 90s. You know right. what I mean? Like yeah. if, if it were to be on TV for say, let's say someone, that guy wants, you know, I don't know, whatever. There's like something or a documentary on skateboarding and you got this clip from the late two, 2020 and it looks like garbage on TV. And everybody's <laughs> like, what the hell are you filming with? <laughs> no, so, but I like that. It's forward thinking though. Like you just said, yeah. there's documentaries. There's, I mean, this is, listen, skateboarding. Yeah. It, it, you never know totally yeah i just think that the really epic tricks should be filmed on hd cameras if yeah. you have them so you can have the option to do what you want with right. it down the road because you can't you can't make an you can't make a vx look better but yes. you can make a v you can make a hd look like vx yes right and so we all have we all have h we have hd cameras okay. that we use for that stuff man jamie thomas bro <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Thomas, dude. What a, give us a, can you give us an exclusive, man? What's going on? Anything any new things coming up with Zero? Any new I mean Chris Cole, I know that was huge, but Well, we got some music collabs that I've been loving just because there's music that I have always looked up to and appreciated and you know we've done a couple of them and we're going into a few you know new ones coming up um i don't know if you've heard of that guy orville peck but we're doing a we're doing a board with orville peck mm -hmm. um he's kind of like a 
Roy Orbison and Morrissey mixed. That's, oh. that's how I would describe it. That sounds super, rad. super original sound. It's kind of country ish, but really cool. Okay. Um, nice. And how are you collaborating with them? Um, we're just releasing a board and he, sk- he grew up skating in Vancouver, Sick. Canada. So he's a, you know, a OG skate rat and he's blowing up and he's super hyped on skating. And so we're doing a board sense. with him rad. and, um, and we have some other like music, music collabs in the works, but we have a bunch of, um, you know, Cole reissues, which everyone would anticipate a bunch of special colorways that never came out mm-hmm. and just trying to do like really cool stuff, you know, take a page out of the Santa Cruz book, you know, you got, yeah. You watch what Santa Cruz did and you watch what the Bones Brigade did. And, you know, Cole for these kids nowadays is like that, you know, he's like, he's like um, those guys were, you know, so, I mean, obviously it's different, different times, but, you know, people want those wall hanger boards or want colorways of his epic models, you know, and he had a lot of really classic graphics from back in the day. And we have all that art kind of queued up and we've been exploring ideas and then also doing new boards with him and doing, you know, including him in new series. And this AM project will be cool. It's basically introducing like five or six new guys. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so amazing. I'm, I'm excited about that. And then, um, you know, we've got a Dane part coming out soon. Wow. And yeah. you, might get, you might get some cold footage in the near future. And hey. with, so, some, with some sprinkles of Jamie in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I might yeah. be in there somewhere. Yeah. I love It'll it. It'll be man. some. It'll be uh, whatever. I'm not. I'm not too serious about it, but I'm trying to. We're having fun. We're having fun at zero, you and go. you know, that's, that's obviously, about. skateboarding is on an upswing. Mm-hmm. We've all heard that. Um, you know, with COVID and mm. organized sports being kind of canceled for a while, they're starting to get back on now. But that's a good six months of you know outdoor and individual activities that people have been embracing yeah so i think that and the cyclical nature of skating we're on an upswing then you got the tony hawk video game yep you got other things coming out and supporting skating in such a huge way and you got so many female skateboarders oh that's the yeah, thing we got a few female a younger female skateboarders that i'm really excited about there's a 10 year old girl named Faye and another girl named lily rose in canada both of them are like 10 Amazing. And, um, oh, amazing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And then um, the girl from uh, that Skate Betty HBO show, uh, uh-huh. I think Rachel Vinberg, maybe Ra- Rochelle Vinberg. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, we've been giving her boards, and I just amazing. really want to support female skating just because I, I we always did for, for the longest time. And I kind of got lazy and just, you know, Alyssa just showed we were friends from Welcome to Hell and from Toy Machine Days, mm-hmm. and it just worked out. And then Marissa, you know, just showed up mike sinclair brought her to the table and she was like perfect for zero Mm -hmm. and then i think i just was spoiled that those two just came about so naturally that i just kind of sat around and thought another girl would come up but i don't think that's happening so i kind of like just went out and tried to like just start supporting some younger girls that are like really young i love it yeah um yeah and they're these these girls are ripping so it's cool to watch them progress and be there to kind of support their careers and for them to feel like you know i communicate with their parents and Mm -hmm. like trying to be real supportive and give the myself my personal time to their relationships and yeah it's cool it's um it's cool this this girl Faye um from uh She's from Toronto area. She's so rad. Ripper. Nice. Yeah, super ripper. Like wow. really, really passionate, aggressive style and rips bowls and has a great kickflip. Her, her, Insta- her Instagram sick. Check her out. Face skate. Face nice. skate. I love it. Yeah. 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 I love it. Uh, one quick question before we wrap this up, because we, we talk about it on the show too. And Jerron was, uh, you know, we were uh, discussing one time, like he's got so much footage probably just on a, on a DV tape somewhere that Socrates filmed or whatever. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have maybe like an archival of like footage that maybe wasn't used in videos? Like, cause yeah. I think now's it, the time to like release a lot of that stuff, you know, or maybe do I something would agree with, with it, you. you know, I would agree with you. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I I think we do. Um, we did a project uh, two years ago where um, we hired um, or we asked a couple people, interns, if someone wanted to volunteer and go through a lot of that footage and, um, you know, and put it all together. And, and, you know, we got most of misled youth, all of the makes, whether they were used or not used, we got all of them on like 10 master tapes. Sick. Wow. And, and so I've been kicking around the idea like next year is Zero's 25 year. Wow. Dude, congratulations. Uh, yeah, th- yeah wow. thank you. We're almost there. Amazing. Um, but I was, I was working really hard from about 98 to 2002 
and a lot of tricks didn't make it in the video parts. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking like, I wondered if I had enough footage to make a full part that oh, no one's ever seen. That would be God. the fucking joke, yes, bro. Yes, please. Really. Look into yeah. that, please. Yeah. So, <laughs> what? But it would be tough to get all the tapes and figure it out. And like in Lee Dog, Lee Dog filmed all of, most of the Dying to Live stuff, mm -hmm. and he has his own tapes. Mm. So it would be like borrowing his tapes and going through them and trying to find the clips from this era. But the idea was is that what if you released a full part of tricks that you'd never seen before and you put it to a song that looks like it would have been one in of the songs time. used in that time yeah and you edited that way and then i thought okay well if you got hard up you could use angles that weren't used oh yep you know That's and kind of do a kind of do a mashup of unused ang kind of a rough cut to a song wow. with 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 tricks that never got used or they were in like a four in one commercial. They weren't in your video part. Right, 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 you know, right. kind of like, oh kind of like all the peripheral scraps. Mm -hmm. If you, it would it be possible to take all the peripheral scraps, pull it all together, and get creative and make like a short part out of it? That Definitely. would be incredible. Yeah. That might be tough, but it totally worth. Not it. impossible. Yeah, totally yeah. Worth not it. impossible. Totally not impossible worth it at all. Yep. And would be it's a joyful. big project though and it's like I, I get a little overwhelmed when I think about it it's like, an overwhelming through, thing yeah, uh, absolutely going through, all the, going through all those tapes but the good thing is is that we'd have misled youth which was probably when I was working the most or skating when I say working mm -hmm. I mean I was doing my best skating because I wasn't that involved in business yet Tomietto right. was still running zero I was just doing the graphics and making the videos. Gotcha. So it wasn't until we started Black Box and I started trying to be a business guy that I really got consumed by business. Before mm -hmm. that, I was like, you know, driving around in the Suzu Rodeo and filming every day in LA, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's, I remember there's a bunch of lines and some footage every once in a while, I'll just be driving down the road and I'll think of something like, oh, we never use that. <laughs> I've probably done that 20 times. Yeah, so I at least know there's 20 tricks out there. <laughs> there you go. I haven't been used. 20 tricks is a, that's 20 a, that's a great start. Shit. Yeah, yeah, that's more than half a video part. Yes. Yeah. Straight up. Please do that. Could you imagine? Hey, real quick. How many tricks do you think there should there be in a video part? Do we ask you this question already? I think in the last one, but old school, video part, old school video parts, 50 tricks. That's right. And then, okay. yeah, it's 50 tricks Damn. in my opinion with it's three to four nice lines and, and you cut the 50 down to about 40 to 45. So you have 10 to trim. See, there we go. I love that's that. That's the old school right. formula. Yeah. That's the old school formula. But I go back I mean, and look at some video parts. And see Dub's going to be counting mark. his old parts. I'm going to be man. like, did I make the mark? Shit. <laughs> 50. I don't think I ever made the mark. <laughs> I mean, but, that's, a you know. part, that's a part that's three to four minutes. Yeah. You know? yeah so for sure. If you're going with like the two minute part, then you're like around 25, 30 tricks with a couple, sure. with a couple of lines. Right. That sounds about right. my, my pace. Yeah. <laughs> my hey, pace is great. like, hey, maybe 10 tricks, but with a lot of slow-mos. <laughs> You're in a, in a team montage or something. And it's, like yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Dude. I'll throw some friends in there. That was how we did the formula back in the day. But I don't think any, there's, you know, all the, all rules are made to be broken. Sure. Yeah, there's no rules these days. No. It doesn't yeah, seem no like there's rules. rules. Roger wanted me to ask you something real quick. Uh, what's going on with Stray? I ride for Stray and I rep it, but they run their own thing. I don't, I don't oh. run it. I just like, but do you have any new, doing, anything new coming out with them or? Uh, yeah, we got, I do a zero collab that is kind of like ongoing and we, I come up with cool ideas and, new ways to like you know combine stray and zero and we got some cool you know stuff in the works for next year and but it's pretty basic it's like you know zero logos on on basic silhouettes but i love it that's my that's that's what i ride and that's what i run and nice. you know awesome. the, the slip-ons and the high tops are perfect for me like ventura and the venice so yeah, I run them. I love them. And they got really great insoles. So, you know, that's all I could ask for. Super simple, basic shoes. They have good insoles. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I ride Canvas and I ride Canvas and Shugu. Canvas and yeah. Shugu. Yeah. I love that feeling. So here's a question we asked some people. New shoes, new board, old shoes, new board, new shoes, old board. New shoes, old board. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, Who see? likes that? Nobody, nobody. I don't mind it, but people usually say that. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got shoes you can't feel in, and then you got grip tape that's non responsive. I don't want nothing to do with that. <laughs> nothing. I don't think no. I, I don't think a lot of people do. But, yeah, it, okay, but it is so, the question. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. So for me, that's the worst. That's the bottom of the list. Bottom, right. And then, and then next would be old shoes, old board. That's fine. I'm totally cool with totally that. Totally cool with that. Yeah. And then, 
old shoes, second day old board. Ooh, that gets no better than that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because the first day, the first day is a little, the board grip's a little too rigid and I don't sand my grip. I don't like that. Okay. I don't, I don't sand the grip. I just like the natural first day, the, the general dirt in the air and from the bottom of your <laughs> yeah. shoe, like get on the board, how it'll get on the board. And the second day, I feel the board is really great. Not overly responsive, but the old shoes make it to where every trick feels as it should, mm -hmm. but the board's not overly responsive. There you go. So that's what I like. That's my personal vibe. And when I say old shoes, I mean, like they probably got three to four days left in them where they're like, feel real good. But I ride canvas shoes. So canvas shoes only last two weeks. Totally. Gotcha. Yeah. They go so, fairly fast. Okay. So, so about 60% dead, 60% 60 dead, used. brand <laughs> yeah. new board second day. Yeah. That's perfect for me, man. That's yeah. like, I feel like that if I were going to try a trick that I was nervous about, or if I was going to, you Ooh. know, and this is something too, we haven't talked about it, but when I go to a skate park, I like to be scared every day I skate at the park. I like to try something that I haven't tried recently or that I feel like I'm not really sure about. Mm. That makes me feel like I'm alive still and that I'm still in this fight. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I like that. I, I, I warm up on flat ground and skating ledges and that's like all fun and games. And I really enjoy that with my friends and we're mm -hmm. having a good time. But once the juices are flowing, my body's warm and my board and my shoes feel good. I like to try and jump on something that's a little sketchy for me. You want to scare yourself. Like, what, yeah, give us an example. Myself. What was the last, Wake when you went up. to the, when you went to the park, what was the last I trick mean, that you I tried? haven't been skating that much lately. So right now I can jump on my old go-tos, like a Laney nose grind. I haven't done one in a month or two. Mm. That's going to be a little scary. A little scary. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah so you. I'll no slide, I'll no slide the hubba to make sure that my, my, everything's working and that <laughs> yeah. feels good. No <laughs> slides are pretty on point and they, they work, and if they you don't get in that good, it, you jump out it's, easy. It's you know? a safe, it's, like, it's a safe trick. It's a yes. safe trick, yeah. So I no slide the hub or the rail, and if that feels good, usually I try and progress to something really quickly, just while I'm a little bit shook and I'm like nervous. I like to feel nervous. Mm. But you know what's great with so, your 180 nose grinds? You you actually do like a 180 nose grind. Most some people now are doing the 180 pinched type of yeah. like nose grind. I think people always did do that. People just had preferences. I just did a 180 to switch 50. That right. was what I preferred. Yep. Yeah. I learned them as a I learned them as a kid like that on curbs. And then I back in the day when Wallenberg was a thing, I did it. I skated Wallenberg all the time, and I would just see if, how long I could 180 nose grind the whole thing. Mm. Yeah. And I know, always and I, thought I tripped on that way because it's more of a commitment than it is the other way, the pinched way. I feel. I like. feel like the pinched way has a, a slip out factor. Like if, if Jamie's way, you're on top of it, you don't have that slip out factor. Well, I don't know, I on rails, slip, on flat, on handrails, I would see you do that. And I was like, dude, that is so gnarly, much commitment to get onto a rail gnarly. and balance like that. Straight up. Well, the confidence in the 180 to switch 5 on a rail is, it's the commitment, like you said, is way higher. Um, and then the slip out factor is not as big of a consequence as you 180 and committing and the board completely flipping out and you having no board. Right, right, yeah. right. So on a rail, on a round rail, the way I I imagine the trick is, is that in the beginning I get into that pinched or like a, a switch 50 at an angle. Mm -hmm. And then I do that a couple to get my aim right. And then the way a, a round bar should go in my mind, if I were to tell somebody how to do it, I would say that you don't get to full switch 180 5 -0 until the very last foot or two of the rail. Because if you do that right out of the gates, it's going to flip it's every flip, time yeah. because you got, you got too much momentum. So how I try and do it is on a rail, you, you get in crooked that's gradually going to switch 5-0. Yeah. And so as you're grinding down the rail, it's getting more and more. You just slow the rhythm down. But if you're doing it on a hubba, you can swing it around to switch 5-0 right out of the gate. Right out of the yeah. gate. Because the, because the hubba is locking you and holding you there. A hubba is the easiest thing to 180 nose grind or 180 fakie nose grind, which is the real term. scary, the though. But yeah. That's the that's the easiest thing to do. Anyway, I do that sometimes, and then mm. um, you know I I like a Bennett grind. I really like that trick yeah, a lot, a and, and it it has a really uh, low slam factor because if you get in wrong, you're in you're in a crooked front board that's like it's in a it's in a Bennett grind position, but you're sliding the 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 let I mean, you're sliding in a front board position. You're just not grinding. Right. And barley grinds do the same thing. You try a barley grind and you miss. You're in a bo crooked board slide, and it's safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
both those tricks on hubba's work really good to just try out of the blue and then i really my favorite trick on a hubba is a front side feeble it's like the, my favorite thing to do oh, front wow. feeble. Um, okay yeah, i could do that forever if i didn't do another trick and i just front feebled hubba's all day you'd be content i'd be content <laughs> yeah it's the best feeling I love that. now why, so why is it such a good feeling it's just like the way that it grinds the way that you get into it the, the it's kind of like a front crook because it has a pinch yeah but the front feeble you have to so on a front feeble on ledges, some people are like, hey, how do you front feeble on ledges? Yeah. And here's what I explained there. You have to know how to get into the front feeble to where you're on your toe wheel. And then you're front feebling, your rail's touching. Mm -hmm. And then the last few inches, you have to push down like you're going to 5 the last, you have to imagine you're going to 5 the last two inches. So you're going to front feeble the whole ledge, and then you're going to start pushing down right before the end, and you're going to five zero the last bit to come and out. When you yeah to come out because if you wait till the end to try and lift up, it just flips under every yeah. time, yeah. every time it'll flip under all day long, mm -hmm. and everyone's like, I can't get it to not flip, and that's because you got to push down before the end to start to start lifting the nose so you can gain con regain control of it. And the reason I like it is no matter how many I've done, I always stay in it too long. I love the feeling of grinding a front feeble. And I find myself just grinding off the end three times before I tell myself, like, what are you doing? You know how to do this. You Why are you doing up, this over yeah. and over? And then I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to tell my homie, I'm going to give him a nux. And I'm going to be like this, try. And then the next one, I push down, I lift up. And then you can just the stomp on the way out and the feeling of riding away is like, none of that should have happened. I feel so good it happened. And you're just <laughs> yeah. I love it, man. Yeah, man. What about anyway. anything out of that? Can you like back 180 or anything like uh, Not, you add any? I, I, people can, people sure. can, but I, I can do the back 180 when the thing's flat, like if it's a flat ledge to fakie. Yep. But when you're going down, you got to get in front of it to back 180. I think you could back Smith back 180 easier than your front feeble front 180 for me. Gotcha. But I, I don't do that one very right, much, but right, right. I don't even need to do anything out of it though. When it feels it good feels and good. it's basic, it just feels good. Now we're talking on a ledge or hubba. Both. A hubba is the best. A it's ledge the best. is like, yeah. yeah, a hubba. I mean, a ledge you can only grind for so long because your wheels are bonking on top. Okay, mm. so a curved ledge it holds the front feeble uh, super good. Right. I love I love that feeling and the hubba. So the curved ledge and the hubba, like so. If I were, if someone were to build a skate park for me in my retirement, <laughs> it just had a it had a curved ledge and a hubba <laughs> that was about an eight stair, seven eight stair hubba. Okay. I could just be front. I could be skating flat ground and front feeble, and that's two things all day. And dude, that that fine. trick trips me out, man. I always see Carol doing them. Ooh, Carol does all the so front feeble on a long ledge. Yeah. I'm like, dude, he how did it on hub. He did it on hub a hideout. Yeah, yeah. But a hideout. But yeah. even on a on a ledge, yeah, like to hold that front feeble, man, that's incredible. It's yeah. very it's, rare it's too. Very, you don't see too many people doing it. No, seems like a hard one, rare, man, for sure. You got, is your burrito? Did you get your burrito? Oh, that thing's cold, man. Oh, look at that thing. man, Jamie, bro. Well, listen, Jamie. You're going to have to zap that thing. Listen, bro. Thank you so much for coming oh, by pleasure, and stopping and chatting with us, dude. Yeah, man. Please come back again. Listen, <laughs> yeah. come right, back again. I'm always down. I'm just waiting for the invite. I'm here to chat. I, I'm a skate nerd and I, I love know. skating and I'm here to talk about it till the cows come home. So you hit me <laughs> yeah. up anytime, I'll be here. Dude, and we love talking to you about it. And I it's so, it. listen, it's when, and, and we want to have guests back in here too. So, you know, uh, eventually, you know, and so, dude, when we, when that happens, come back in, sit in the chair, talk to us, you know, just, I, we, we love it. We love it. We I'm can down. talk to you all I'm day. Down. I'm okay. down. Last one we talked for seven hours. And I don't even know how long it was. That was crazy. <laughs> that was one of the longest was ones we've ever done. I yeah. know. <laughs> I had to beg you to cut a half an hour out of it. Dude. I was like, dude, I can't be on the internet talking for four hours. But, but Jamie, people love it. They wanted more. Yeah, they did. Yeah. He they did wanted say that. more. He did say that. They're they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jamie, they're not. We're just big, everybody's big fans, bro. Yeah, oh, love come to hear on, you big talk. time, come bro. On. Love to hear you. When talk the legend later. comes on, this you know the show. I mean, come on, I yeah. Hear him talk. Well, I kind of feel bad. I always feel bad because I like talking, you know, and I talk about stories for days. And no, but um, it, it's yeah, it's warranted, good, yeah. bro, because yeah. we it's it's fascinating. Like your career is fascinating, legendary status, like all of the above. You know what I mean? So we we can't well, get enough. You, we can't get enough of it. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be in the game. Dude, we love you, bro. And hey, much success, dude. Congratulations on Chris Cole joining the Zero yes, Squad. Dude, Can't so wait amazing. for Dane's part to come out. We don't know when, but we're going to be on the lookout for it. Yeah. And, video. and the AM video. Dude, a lot of good things coming up, man. We're stoked. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm stoked too, man. I'm happy to, yeah. I'm happy to be in the game working with these guys and it's a pleasure. They're great. Bro, yeah. okay, you dude. have a great, great, great squad. Solid, right now. Yep. Solid it's squad. Amazing. Well, That's it. Well, thank you guys for the invite. I appreciate it. And, um, uh, yeah, man, if you listen to this and you sat here for this long, that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>